That's the dumbest and greatest thing ever. And it was an app. It was an app on the phone, and you were the only guys I ever knew that made something worthwhile out of that app. Because I tried, and I couldn't do it. anything worth a shit, but I just like, suck it, suck it now. <laughs> the, little, the little runs he would add in it were amazing. <laughs> some guy is going to want to watch some DVD. God damn it, hurry. <laughs> hurry up now. <laughs> God damn it, hurry. <laughs> uh, I'll say how old that oh, is. They shit. don't mention Blu rays at all. I don't no. think Blu rays are even a thing when you do this. I want, I want some Blu rays. Yeah, big sh- <laughs> a big oh, shout out to Max was the one that actually brought that up. And I was like, which song is that? I got to get and a copy of that. Did- I don't think I have. I, I, I might have had it at one point and I lost it. I got to get a copy of that. You gotta yeah, I'll, I'll send gonna, it to you. I want like to play that intro. wherever I go. Yeah. Everywhere I go. God damn. You just have like a little, <laughs> yeah, a little tape player or something you can carry with you when you walk into a room. Yeah. You can play <laughs> well, watch some DVDs. Slip I think the li- one of the lines is, God damn, hurry now, I want to watch some DVD DVDs. Extras. <laughs> it's like, God what? damn it, hurry. <laughs> hurry, hurry. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, I love that. So, yeah, that was just great. I, I probably listened to that twenty times today. Actually, oh, it's, just, it's actually really good. I like it. It's really good. Um, slippy, slippy, slip face culture, baby. Woo! Goddamn! Suck a sucking now. Suck a sucky sucking now. Like, what? Um, that song will be on Patreon, JP Fan eighty nine. We already got all kinds of people in here, by the way. Uh, okay. Excited to ask you about a bunch of titles, Slippy, or whatever okay. they want to ask you because it's yeah, ask I Slippy. I anything. can't imagine what titles are going to come up in this chat. Now, listen, it may not be what you think. It may be a lot of stuff that's completely uh, off the wall. I'm sure. Well, we did one of these "Ask Me Anything"s a few weeks ago, and they asked us about an experience when we would act, we actually shit on ourselves. So that you may get one of those questions as well. <laughs> I hope not. That's not a question I really want to talk about. <laughs> well, the last time I shit myself. Mm. Give us the circumstances. <laughs> Let me think about it. What time was t- earlier <laughs> today? I, think, oh. I don't know. Also, another interesting uh, anecdote I had here. June the 29th, 2007 was the very first show Felcher was on. Was so, it, I thought it was earlier than that. Really? Well, this was the first show you were on as a guest. I don't know. You may oh. have called in. Oh, okay. Um, so this is like the 15 15th year of... Year? Uh, God. 15... Yeah, 15 years of Felcher on Dead Pit Bulls. That is fucking depressing. Dude. I remember back in old Art 7, <laughs> I was on the Dead Pit Radio Hour. <laughs> yeah, so I'm guessing you probably called in. Like, that's what I'm thinking, too. Like, But that was the first time that you were actually oh, I like had a guest. To, I think we only had yeah. cell phones back then. I don't think we had any other technology. That was back when we had uh, ads for cigarettes on the show. We were like, <laughs> 2007, I don't think the first iPhone was even out yet. So that just shows no, you how long ago been, that was. Yeah. Would have been that fall, right? So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's good to get you back on here. It's been almost a year. I think the last time you were on, you were on with uh, Don May, and uh, there's oh, yeah, been yeah, all yeah. kinds of crazy shit that's went on since then. So we thought it'd be a good t- uh, chance to get you back on, and maybe you could talk about some of that stuff, or, or maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. I would probably lean towards the maybe not. <laughs> um, but uh, just, see, I, I don't want just the way to be, he said that because there's going to be a lot of no, no, can't say a word. No, because you're kind of in between, right? Because you're friends yeah. with both sides there. Well, yeah, like you I work mean, with both I, sides. I want to, you know, I, I would love to come out here and just talk about all the titles that are coming up that I know about. But then, you know. 
I step outside my front door and I see a little red laser light on my chest and my and I die. So, because uh, there are some people who would get that pissed off about it. So I have to I have to tread the line very carefully, as you know, about what I can talk about, what I can't talk about. But it's yeah, because like I don't you, uh, to, you know, if you were to speak about this, not only could you be killed, but you could be sued as well because you signed paperwork and all that, right? In so. some certain in certain situations, yes, yeah. Yeah, but whatever you can legally say, you can say, and we'll okay, just leave I, I, it will, at that. I promise you this: I will not hold back if I am allowed to say something. I'm not going to be just a dick, just to, you know. I was like, I'm not telling those dead bo- boys nothing. They keep teasing about the nightmare on Elm Street box set, which I know nothing about. So you know, right, right. So we're going to get go ahead and get rolling. Rapid fire questions. Some of this stuff may be just stupid shit. I don't really know. I'm not really... Stupid shit on the Dead Pit show? Yeah. You are kidding. <laughs> no. All I right. refuse to believe such nonsense. After that intro, I don't know how you could believe that. Suck it, suck it, Dale. Something on. else, though, that I wanted to mention Sorry, real quick that. here, because this will give you an idea on how long ago this was, too. Some of the titles you were working on in that first episode we had you on, mm. The Monster Squad from Lionsgate. Yeah. Jesus. That was the very first DVD release of that. Yeah. The Burning on MGM, very yeah. first uh, DVD. I think it was the Creep Show UK yeah. DVD. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Eaten Alive DVD from Dark Sky Films. And I revisited was... all of those at one point or another. Uh, and since in the years since, because they just keep coming back. You know, like Jason. Just, uh, Jason, he keeps coming back. Anyway. All right. First one up here, though, from Jonathan Songko. What are your thoughts on Rabid? That's an interesting one. What am I... <laughs> on the condition or the movie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing the movie. Uh, it's great. Uh, it's a terrific early Cronenberg. It's probably not my favorite of his earlier films. Um, but uh, I still think that one would probably be Shivers. I really still love Shivers a lot. Um, but Marilyn Chambers actually gives a really good performance in it. And, uh, yeah, I like it. It's a good movie. That's I one that seen, Criterion. Is that a Criterion release? No, uh, Shout Factory did that. Oh, okay. Uh, and then the, uh, I did do something for it for the UK release that Arrow did, uh, which I think got ported over. I can't remember. if They all kind of blend together after a little while. Um, but I know I did something for that. And uh, um, I have not seen the Soska Sisters remake of it yet. I haven't either, but I'd like to for some reason. Yeah. Gun to your head, though, Slippy. You have to pick one Cronenberg movie. What is it? Naked Lunch. Damn, I was not expecting that. Hmm. I mean, there's several, there's several I could choose, but I love Naked Lunch. I just love that movie. Led Zepp Troy. But you got a Zeppelin shirt on the night. I don't know if people do. can see I that do. there. Um, cheerleader Camp. We were talking about this oh, not yeah. too long ago. Um, because... Cheerleader Camp has fallen into sort of a weird legal limbo, as last I checked. Because we, I, I remember we acquired it when I worked at Anchor Bay, and we brought out the first DVD release of it. Um, but since then, the director and also who I think was also an owner or co-owner of the film has passed away, and the film actually came up for auction briefly through SAG, and I don't know what happened with that. Hmm. So it's one of those movies where. I don't honestly know who owns it uh, right now. I don't know who does know who owns it. So, does know who owns it. So, I do know who owns it. There we go. This is the proper language. So, I don't yeah, know that what, was... I don't know. I don't know. I think the only time I'd ever seen... Well, the first time I'd seen it was uh, at that horror find show. I think me and Uncle Bill... I, that was one of the Anchor Bay releases that summer or whatever. Yeah. And they had a screening of that up there. And it's yeah. just so weird. It's been almost 20 years ago. <clears throat> 20 years. The hands of time. <laughs> Rambo, Raff for Life, what's going on, man? He said, I wanted to ask about the James Brolin 1980, mm. Night of the Juggler, and 1982 Richard Chamberlain, Murder by Phone. <laughs> Sadly, they're only on VHS. Any word if uh, a company will get these titles? Night of the so Juggler, forth. yeah. That there's a lot of people have been wondering about that one. It's owned by another company or private company or something, or a producer or something, and they're either not dealing or they want too much more. Something's going on. There's been a, a, an ongoing issue with that for years. 
I don't know <laughs> much about Murder by Phone other than, oddly enough, uh, a couple friends and I did a movie night not long ago, and that was the one that was chosen, and we watched Murder by Phone. That is one of the goofiest fucking movies I have watched in a long time. I mean, literally, a signal comes through the phone, which causes people to start going, bleep, 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 and then <laughs> they, like, explode and fly back through windows and shit. It's the, and then it has the dorkiest, goofiest final moment in movie history, as far as I'm concerned. It is, it is literally, it was like they didn't have a final scare, so they turn, tried to turn something innocuous into a scare, and it doesn't work. And it's just, it's basically Richard Chamberlain, I, this won't ruin the ending for you because it tells you nothing. It's Richard L. Chamberlain happily holding up a phone going, I'll call you! And then it freeze frames and it goes, Dun, dun, dun! And you're like, what the fuck is this? It is, it is amazing how much talent is in that movie and it's so fucking goofy. Uh, it is, yeah, it's just, it's also known as, um, Bells, I think it was its original title was Bells, but it got released here. I've got to see that, I've see that by movie. Foo. Bur- trust me, Murder by Phone is a much more apt title for that movie because it's so stupid. Alpha but, Romero, uh, and I didn't know how much it went for, <clears throat> but I knew it was on auction. Oh yeah. Any word on who purchased the Lost Cut today for fifty thousand dollars? George Romero's Martin. <laughs> um. I'm not allowed to say anything as of right now. Oh. Um, all I will tell you is... No, I, uh, this is all I can say. The, the situation regarding that print has been kind of weird because it was lost for 40 years. And this is what George was trying to figure out where it had been left. And, you know, there was a rumor that it was left at a theater in New Jersey after a screening there. And uh, they brought it to, a uh, like, a farmhouse and showed it to a couple on a projector... They were trying to find locations for Dawn or Night Riders, and no one could really remember what the hell happened. Well, as it turns out, that's pretty much what did happen: is it got left behind at a couple's house uh, after George and uh, some other people brought it to screen for them to either get financing for one of the movies coming up or for locations, something to that effect. They said that they apparently the story is that they they were gifted that print, and there's other people who say, well, no, we didn't gift them that; we just left it there. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the print was theirs. It was abandoned property, essentially, and they've had it for 40 years. <clears throat> and they came out of the woodwork a little while ago, and I believe went straight to the Living Dead Museum in Monroeville, the Monroeville Mall, and said, we have this print. Is this worth anything? Or you know, And that's how this whole thing got started. Now, they own the print, or they owned the print, but they didn't own the intellectual rights to the movie. They could... They could have the print and show it on their own wall and their own living room, but they couldn't do any screenings. They couldn't release it on DVD because Richard Rubenstein owns those rights. So it's it was kind of a weird thing. They could own the physical print, but they couldn't. It's really weird. Yeah, but exploit. they could sell it. That's kind of weird too. Well, they could sell the physical print, yeah. but that no rights go with that other than owning that print. You know, that's exactly how they're selling the physical thing, not the right to exploit it or to right. make money off of it. And in any case. I, I believe some conversations happened between Richard and these people as far as getting the print back. I was not privy to any of that. I don't know if anything actually did happen or not, but I would imagine something did. All I know is at some point, the people who owned the print decided to put it up for sale on a website and were taking private bids for a while. They apparently didn't get the money they wanted. And then they gave it to an auction house. And this morning... They were taking it was they were taking bids on it online for a couple of weeks, and then this morning was the live auction, and yes, with fees and everything all told in, it sold for over fifty thousand dollars. Nice. Um, all I can say Damn. is, all I can say is, the individual who did buy it is a friend of the George Romero Foundation, and it is safe, and it will be. Um, it will not be disappearing into the warehouse at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, is basically what I'm saying. Uh, so this is actually, it's actually very, very good news today. Yeah. Um, so uh, all I can say is um, uh, as to whether or not something gets worked out to release it, um, I don't know. But we know where it is. It's in good hands and it will stay that way. And so it's not going to get lost again. So that's, 
it was actually a very, very tense morning because I'm sitting there watching this thing and we knew that if it went any higher, it was going to go to somebody else. We didn't know who the hell that was. And it didn't. And so it stayed with the person that uh, was being very generous in, uh, in bidding on it. And um, again, all I can say is that it's, it's safe, which is... Let me ask you this, Sleepy. Do you know if, you know, I'm just speculating here, if there's enough time to include that in any release that might be upcoming? Probably not. Because, okay. again, this was all be dependent on working out something with Richard Rubens. I mean, right now, there's months ahead of... Okay. Well, I think Second out. Sight pretty much already said they're moving forward Yeah, they, I, I think they... At their well, I mean... Right now, they couldn't really wait any longer. And, um, and again, it, uh, there's different people involved in this. Just having the print alone is not enough. Things would have to be yeah. worked out with, who, you know, the owner of the movie, the intellectual rights owner, and um, that's a whole other process. So at this point, if and when it does finally come out, it'll probably be its own separate thing, is what I'm imagining. But that's I mean, me speculating at this point. I have no inside information on what's going to happen next. All I know is that the print is safe. That's all I know. I mean, this is one of those things where Romero fans are kind of been waiting on it forever. Yeah. And, you know, and a lot of people were really kind of just downtrodden about that whole thing not going through. Well, we were, I was, we were just, my concern was that some collector guy with, you know, deep pockets who doesn't give a shit was just going to buy it and put it on a shelf and then we wouldn't find out where it went or it would just disappear for another 40 years. Or, God forbid, throw it up on a shitty projector and the thing breaks and the whole print catches fire, you know, or some shit. I mean, it Could was happen, just like, yeah. oh, God. So it's it's in all i can say is it's in the best possible hands it could be in and um very it was a lot of celebrating this morning uh with some people about where what happened it was just great. Well, yeah i mean that's good at least we know where it's at and everything yeah. and uh yeah. it sounds like this guy may be willing to play ball you know if oh, they wanted wanted it uh, oh, in the ab- future as far as the uh, access to the act yes yeah there's not going to be any question of that he did it to preserve George's legacy. What a, what an odd story though that they, they just left it in some random person's Again, house and like you know it was forty years ago and God only knows what happened. They may have just dropped it. and said, "Hey, do you want to watch it a couple more times before you make a decision?" Uh, or you know, we'll pick it up later. Or they interpreted. It. Who knows what happened? It's forty years ago. God only yeah. knows. Yeah. And um, you know, Spook House Plastic here, real quick. A couple of titles: Night Vision by Michael Kruger and. Rollerblade by Donald Jackson. I want to say someone announced Night Vision not long ago, or someone was talking about that, but maybe I'm thinking of Night Visitor. Um, but uh, Rollerblade, I, unless it's reverted to somebody else, that would still be part of the New World catalog, unless it's reverted back to an original producer or something. So that would be over at uh, RLJ, I guess. Uh, but no, don't know a thing about those. JP fan, of course, you probably can't talk about this. Anything new you're working on? <laughs> Um, Any particular studio you want to talk about that you're working on? Uh, well, I mean, there's a couple of things I can. I mean, I've been doing some. What's been fun is lately I've been moving and doing into going into some uh, more technical side of things, uh, especially for Vinegar Syndrome. I've been doing some uh, reassembling of some negatives for some movies, movies that were, for one reason or another, edited on video, but were not, you know, edited on film. So you have to go back and. Or a situation where they did, uh, it was shot on 16, and they did a 16 AB roll negative, but that wasn't cut and trimmed and conformed. Then they blew that up to 35 and cut on 35. So you want to go back to the original 16, but you still got to reassemble everything. Um, It's less footage to go through, but you still have to go back in and line up every single shot in the movie. So I've done a couple of those for Vinegar Syndrome lately. And I've really been enjoying that work, and I've been redoing some credit sequences that were only shot on video originally, going back and matching fonts and backgrounds and stuff like that. I enjoy that. Um, I did just finish, and it's been announced. uh, I don't think the extras have been announced yet, but uh, the amusement park. George Romero's lost the amusement park. Uh, Shutter's bringing that on Blu-ray, and I did some extras for that uh, at the last movie. We managed to get some uh, people in there for that. So that's going to have a nice little array of extras for it. I'm very happy about that because that's a fascinating uh, piece. And then I'm, uh, I am finishing up 
two more Vestron titles for Lionsgate. Uh, I'm not sure when those are going to hit, but the one's going to be done by the end of this month, and then the next one will be done next month. And then um, let's see what else can I... I do have a, a, a big project that will be taking up most of my time in October or in August and uh, 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 um, September going into October, but that one I actually do have a signed contract on that I cannot talk about. Um, but uh, when you uh, when it's finally announced, it will not surprise you that I got involved <laughs> with this particular title. No, just uh, say that. No, yeah. So and then there's other, there's a couple other things here and there, but uh, I'm also looking at doing some podcast stuff. I'll, I'll, that's one thing I, I've been doing. I do. I, I have a podcast called the Spooky Picture Show, which I host with three other friends of mine. It's all it's just a, it's a group effort. I'm not. It's not like my podcast and there's three other people. It was actually the idea of a friend of mine, Chris McGibbon, who I worked with on uh, the Video Dead Blu-ray many years ago, and uh, he came up with this idea of uh, all f- the four of us doing this podcast together, and we've done I think seven or eight episodes, something like that now, and uh, we've got an interview with Fred Decker and Andre Gower coming up uh, next month for uh, the monster. Is it yeah next month or the month or. I, all I know is we've recorded an interview with those guys and it'll be up soon and uh, it's going to be um, it's, it's been a lot of fun so far so check out the Spooky Picture Show if you want to hear more of me and whatever the hell it is I talk about so that's you, what I'm working on right now so. um, oh someone was asking about the tapes behind you I think it was John those are think, like your oh, you're DV about, tapes right? About right here? yeah yeah, those are that's my mini DV catalog. Back when I shot on mini DV, I shot on mini DV from about 2004 through 2008 into 2008, and a little, a couple into 2009. Um, but then after that, it was all to uh, cards. Uh, I remember the first time I shot on cards was on. Survival. I've got some of these too. Oh, yeah. They are yeah. very mini. They're not very big. No, they're not. They're, and they're, they're hard to keep track of sometimes. I just tipped that whole shelf over about four months ago. I was I was holding on to the top of it, cleaning it off, and I tipped it too far forward, and there's like four racks of tapes in there, and they all fell forward and smashed to the ground. It took three hours to get them all back in the order again. Um, but it, it did remind me of, like, oh, I have this. I forgot I had that. Oh, shit. But, yeah, all the masters for Creep Show, Monster Squad, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1 and 2, Pumpkinhead, they're all in there. That's, that's all mini-DV stuff. And some of it's HDV, which is high-definition mini-DV. Um, but, um, yeah, those were the... But Survival of the Dead, George Romero's Survival of the Dead, which we shot in Fall of Away, that was the first time I ever shot onto cards, and it freaked me out. Because I'm like, but, but where is the footage? I understand tape, I understand where that is, but where is this? And I was just very, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. I don't know. Whoa, guys, this is so weird. Within two days, I'm like, tapes? Puh, fuck tapes. Tapes are for assholes. You know, I'm just like, this is the way to, wow, I loved it. And so I, you know, I've been digital ever since. But, uh, yeah, that's what those are. Those are those are all um, mini, my mini DV catalog. I think there's like five of those little uh, brackets bra- in there with, Probably about two or three hundred tapes. This is an interesting one that I was actually thinking about mentioning myself. Rambo here helped me out. Mm. Why do you think Scream Factory, and Scream Factory is not the only one, by the way. I think a lot of companies are doing this. They're shying away from the full-length documentaries and just doing individual interviews and stuff uh-huh. like that. Yeah. And then because you, I think before the Tales from the Dark Side one came out, that was originally going to be a feature-length documentary right it that is, was supposed well it to is be. it is oh okay um yeah I, i've never really had any firm discussions with them about this particular thing but they do seem to like individual featurettes because they can list them on the back cover in such a way that it just fills up the back cover with a lot of features and my whole thing is well it's all in how you phrase it uh you know you can describe a full-length doc in just the same way with all the same names and everything and but in any case, um, Tales from the Dark Side is a full-length doc. It's a chapter doc. They don't have a play-all feature on there, though, for it, which I found out later. I'm like, what the hell was that for? So I was pissed off about that. Um, 
but I never, I just did it that way. I never consult. They just, you know, they hired me for the job. I told them that's what I was doing and that's what I did. I wouldn't that imagine was, that you would really think about that either, would you? Like, oh, I need no. to break this down into 15 different and it segments. Wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked that way because, you know, it just, I don't, sometimes, look, sometimes you have to do that because you don't get all the people you need for a full length doc. Uh, and that's fine. But often or not, it's just, you hear so many of the same stories over and over again. And I just like, I, I'd rather have a, a, you know, a 90 minute doc rather than, three and a half hours of individual stories which overlap and tell you the same thing over and over and over again um that's just me i mean i know some people want more and more and more and i understand that but i i've come to the conclusion that i'd rather present the material in its best form whatever that is than the quantity you know quality over quantity for me always is kind of where i i go so you know i we we were talking uh last night about uh, William Freak and Slippy and uh, somebody brought up the cruising documentary being like one of the best overall kind of full length documentaries just because of how like insane it was. Do you have like a favorite like full length documentary about a film like that? Oh, well, there are several that are really good. Um, the first one that really inspired me to do this in the first place was the Joe Spinell story oh, on yeah. Maniac which David Gregory did, which was really just wonderful. Gave me a really great idea of just how uh, eccentric and weird and what an up and down life Joe Spinell had and you know how, how he could be such a beloved figure and yet he could drive people batshit crazy too. Um, there have been several ones, like uh, David did one not too long ago, Lost Souls, the making of the Island of Dr. Moreau, uh, which was really, really good. Um, then there's been like Never Sleep Again. I still think it's one of the high water marks of the genre, in terms of being able to cover that much material and also be about the rise and fall of New Line Pictures. You know, so there's several of them out there that are really great. Uh, you know, I, it's hard for me to. Uh, I don't watch as many of them as I would normally watch, just because when you do it all day, sometimes the last thing you want to watch is another making of documentary about a about a movie, but. Uh, uh, no, there's a lot of really great work out there. It's not a very big pond of us out there. You know, there's just there's like half dozen, maybe a little bit more of us out there act- actively doing this still for a living. And uh, so we all know each other and we're all friendly with each other and all supportive of each other at the end of the day. we got a couple of super chats I wanted to mention on here because they're throwing us some cash bulls. Do I get any part of this? Oh, yeah. Well, you'll have to talk to Grover, our lawyer. Um, (laughs) Michael. (laughs) Grover. Yeah, Eric C. Collins. You have a lawyer named Grover? Well, we lost Eric C. Collins to prison, so Grover is uh, the new heavy hitter. Are there any project? This is from Michael Rashpaul. Thanks for the super chat, sir. Canadian, $5, by the way. Hmm. Um, What projects never got off the ground for whatever reason or others? Is some stuff that you recorded? And had to kind of sit on for a long time before it ever got used, or oh, it never couple, got there's used. Been, there's there've been a couple that one, the big one that never happened was Werewolf the TV show. I shot several interviews and recorded many commentaries for some of those episodes, and then it got pulled at the last minute. From what I was told, one song in one of the episodes they couldn't clear the rights to, and for one reason or another they couldn't replace it, and so hmm. they just canceled the whole damn thing. Uh, which sucked. So that that's one that uh, has never seen the light of day. Um, there's a few odds and ends here, but not too many have ever been canceled outright. I remember one big one. I mean, this was an extra that was on the DVD originally, and it got yanked, was Within the Woods that was on the uh, Evil Dead. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, in the yeah. the menu and art and everything is still actually on there. But then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's like he's in. It's like you just like have a flashback to Vietnam or something. <laughs> I feel like I feel you know. Right now it's like the Quint speech from about the Indianapolis from Jaws. <laughs> like I was there. Yeah, I was there Monday. <laughs> the so. Black they called it Black Monday. Awesome. Came in, Sam, <laughs> Sam Raimi had pulled the Within the Woods DVD. <laughs> You I'll looked into Sam Raimi's uh, eyes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like a black eye. It's like a doll's <laughs> eye. <laughs> I'll never watch a Sam Raimi movie again. <laughs> That's right. No, it was it was it was it was bad because we had made up all the packaging. Two hundred thousand pieces of packaging were done. 
Shit. And the disc Jesus. was going into replication that day or the next day. And so that had to come to a screeching halt. We had to recall this packaging. All the ads had gone out, too. They'd been advertising. It was a Black Monday. Ooh, that was a bad fucking day. And, yeah, they had to make the revisions so quick they left that menu screen on there. They just adjusted the one main screen to get access to it, pulled the file off, but they left that little screen that explained that the music had been changed and blah, 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 blah. Uh, they left that on there because they was just like, we don't have time. We just got to get this big thing out the damn door because that was a big release for us. And so it was, um, and that was in 2002. That was 20 years ago. So let me ask you about, I've always been curious because that footage, if, if it was, you know, there's one that's on YouTube that looks freaking awful. And I think that's the same one that everybody has seen. Right. Was this like original source material you guys got access to or what? It was a print that one, I think Bruce provided, I think. And it was cleaned up and it was rescored because he had music from Patton in there and yeah. Planet of the Apes and shit like that. And so it looked a lot better than it's, I mean, it looked, it's still rough. I mean, it was always going to look, no matter what you go back to, it was always going to look rough. Um, but it certainly looked a lot better than what's been floating around out there. Um, but, um, yeah, God only knows where that master is now. The company that did all our work back then has been gone for years and they've been folded up into another company that has been gone for years and shit only knows where that is. Another one that I'm sure a lot of people want to ask about JP fan, 1989 fright night part two. Is it another victim of being stuck in legal issues due to the what is it, the Menendez brothers family yeah, owned it or uh, something? Yeah, basically because uh, the, the, me- the father was the head of uh, one of the companies that was releasing or involved in the release of Fright Night Part 2. It, had n- it doesn't have anything to do with that. Um, it, it's just, it's a weird situation because it was involved in the negotiations for the remake and it got kind of orphaned in a weird way, but it's still part of it. It's, it's, a, it's a legal quagmire that will take still a very long time to, to sort out. And it's going to require some people really putting a lot of effort in to try to figure it out. And I think at the end of the day, it's just like, there's not enough money in it just to free up this one little movie, you know, at the end of the day. I want to meet the person that goes like balls to the wall for Fright Night 2, though. It's just like, I'm going to fucking solve see, this. I would love to see that come back out. I know there was some... Some Very rumors that Lionsgate owned it, but it's well, not they did as... For a, they did yeah. for a while the, the existing uh, home video deal for that and several other titles made by this company, New Century Vista, uh, were over at... Originally, they were part of IVE, which became Live, which became Artisan, which then got folded into Lionsgate. And Lionsgate did have it for a little while, but then that whole deal came up and it reverted back to the original producers... But then that's where this whole mess gets started. It, trust me, it would it, it, to explain it all would take an hour, and quite frankly, it's really boring. But it's just, <laughs> I got it's, you. It's, it's legal shit. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, fan of Eli, uh, I hope it's Eli Manning and not the other one. Um, will Texas Chainsaw Massacre get a US 4K release or? Does he need to import the turbine 4K? And I think Second Sight's announced a 4K as well, right? Yeah, I think they did. Um, last night, as far as I know, MPI still controls it for here in the U.S. Unless that's changed. I haven't. I used to work with MPI all the time. I haven't talked with them in years. Um, so I would imagine at some point there'll be a 4K here in the states. Absolutely. There's no legal issues preventing it from happening uh, that I'm aware of. But mm. I haven't heard anything. So I don't know when dark sky films or MPI or whatever, they flat out own the movie outright. Don't they? I mean, it's I don't not know a... if they do, or they just have a long, t- I, I, no, I don't think they own it, but they do have a long term license or did. Um, but I don't know if that's still active or not, or cause Kim Hinkle and, uh, Robert Kuhn and the other members of vortex that are still around. They own the movie now. And- Mojo Gibson Gibson. Do you consider uncle Bill rad enough to be in the rad pack? Can you explain to me what the Rad Pack is? Um, well, Garrett, that helps us out on the show here, mm-hmm. born to be rad.com, he's starting his own faction, right? He's kind of spinning off, you know, how like uh, 
DX and WWF and then X-Pac had the X Factor. Like he had his own little side group, right? So um, that's what the they're kind of doing their own streams and talking about uh, pink and purple and blue and um, rad stuff from the 80s. No, Uncle Bill's not rad enough to be part of that group. Fuck! I didn't think so either. He you're, wears you're, khaki you're, pants. You're, Listen! You're, you're stuck here. Listen, <laughs> Listen! I'm rad enough, and damn it, people like me. I will get into this group, Slippy. Nah. My Killer Pod, that's one of the rad pack right there, My Killer Podcast. Don't nah, fear the creeper. Hmm. Nah. Uh, you're not, no. No rad uh, pack for you, buddy. <laughs> I'll no. show you. <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> uh, people putting over the I, steel book for the Kindred on here. That was very nice packaging. Very nice wait, transfer. Wait, wait, wait. Well. I do have one on here that I want to ask because I saw this one and I'm curious. Go for it. it. All right. Hey, Slippy, where did Scream Factory move their office to? They're not at the West LA office that they were at in the 2010s. More specifically, why do you know why they moved offices? Uh, yeah, they moved a, a, some time ago. Um, I don't know why they moved. They just moved. They don't talk to me very much. I don't do a whole lot of work for them anymore. So <laughs> Good. Did you I'd finally let right. loose on them? No, 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 no. We're still on good terms. I still do stuff for them every now and then, but uh, well, um, but not, you know, not like I used to. Yeah, they ain't worth shit, let's be honest. <laughs> I think, like, the... Uh, <laughs> I you, almost guys ex- you guys can't talk about Scream Factor ever since you decided to shit in a box and mail it to them or whatever the hell it was. You know, Listen, that, that, Scream, that pretty- Scream Factor don't know what to do with us because on the one hand, we do a show where we break down every release they've ever come out with year by year, right? On the mm-hmm. other hand, we may have shit in a box and sent it to them. <laughs> Who's to say? So it's like, we're yeah, helping them. At least them. one box. Maybe. I, just, I just remember that show and see <laughs> it's gone. It's like, he won't go Tells he want me to send a night breed back. I'll shit in the box and send that to him. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's not going to go over well. And it didn't. <laughs> it really didn't. Do you know how no, much money I would give to We're know, blacklisted like, still to this day because of that, yeah. actually. And that, oh, they were, probably they not were, that alone, but that was oh, what they started. Were, it. They were pissed at you over yeah. that. Ooh. I would love to have been in a room to see that when they heard all that. What about uh, Ghoulies 3 from uh, Vestron? That's been, that's that been talked about actually um we, we we that's come up a few times it's uh i'd love to do it because <coughs> actually that's my favorite of the ghoulies movies believe it or not is uh ghoulies go to college and um the other two are out there doing very well i don't really talk about no one talks about part four too much no um but uh you know it's really not that bad but it, it's uh i would no i would love to see ghoulies three happen and it has come up on occasion and if the vest online continues to chug along at some point i would imagine it will show up in there but um we're not working on it right now that's for sure are you already done with it then no <laughs> okay. nope. who has the rights to monster squad it's been a little while since uh what was it all the films i think released it yeah last, right? i've had it uh well, the rights have always been, they've been over at uh, Viacom, um, Paramount. They own the Republic catalog, which is where Monster Squad is part of. And when Lionsgate brought it out, they had licensed that catalog from Paramount for a period of time. And then Olive picked up that catalog, or a lot of pieces of that catalog. And that's how they got Monster Squad. As far as I know, that's still in print. Is it still in print or not? Or I don't know. I think so, yeah. yeah. I think I saw it not too long ago. <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, unless that's coming up or someone else will come in and get it, you know, because that catalog has, like, Running Man and uh, Cujo and um, what's the other one? Light of Day with Michael J. Fox and uh, Ironweed with Jack Nicholson and Meryl Streep. There's a whole bunch of them in there. Uh, so that would be, Unless they piecemeal it out these days, but back back when Lionsgate had it, they just like they just sublicensed that whole catalog over. But um, I was, I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming Olive still has it. But if I would love to see someone snap it up and do a 4K, that'd be great. Uh, that would be yeah, that would look really good. But um, I don't know. Any plans on anything similar, uh, like a feature length documentary, like just desserts that you did years ago? from Slaughterpool. Yeah, there's been a couple things uh, I've been thinking about. Um, 
it's just it's difficult to you know you have to pick the right movie that can really stand on its own that has the the cachet to be out on its own uh, there's a couple extended versions of some documentaries I did back in the day. I released one of them on my own, After Effects, which uh, did okay. It's still available on Diabolic, but uh, it didn't get a lot of press, and that was really kind of my fault because I was really late in getting it out. Um, but, you know, there's a few things I've thought about, but uh, I don't know. I'm kind of trying to figure out what my next kind of move is in terms of what I'm going to be doing going forward because you can't do the DVD thing for extras forever. And uh, I was surprised. I'm surprised I've been able to do it as long as I have. Uh, yeah. So there was a yeah. time there, probably right before Scream Factory started up, where it seemed like it was slowing down a lot. Like it's you know. weird. Yeah. Every year I thought oh, this is it. This is the last year. And then nope, not so much. And then it just exploded in the latter half of the 2010s. I mean, at like 2013 on, for about five years, I I couldn't tell you what was right from left, from down, from up. You know, people would tell me, hey, I love what you did on such and such disc. I'm like, I did? <laughs> oh, I, I, when was I hope that? it was yeah. good. You tell me. I, fuck, I don't remember. I mean, it was just, you know, nonstop. And, it would, and that that's just not sustainable. Um, after a while, it's just like, I, I can't remember what the fuck I'm doing. So James Hester's wanting to know about the Hellraiser direct-to-video t- direct uh, Did you, did you almost say direct-to-titty? Direct to titties. <laughs> Direct to titty, baby. Direct to titties. No. Um, He's just thinking are, about titties all the time. As well. I think the majority of those are over at uh, Paramount because Paramount now has a controlling interest in the Miramax catalog, the old Miramax catalog. And that's where, like, Inferno and Debtor and those are over there, Hellseeker and those. And I think, but some of the later era ones may be over at other companies because. Uh, the wine scenes kind of traveled around a little bit, but um, yeah. So some of those are over at uh, Paramount, and uh, it would depend on them to uh, get those out. Here's another regular that people have been asking about for ever: Summer Camp Nightmare. That one's kind of just in limbo out there. It was, you know, I don't know. Uh, I would love to see that one come out because it's, and it was always that was a terrible title for that movie. I think originally it was the Butterfly Revolution, which is not a great title, but it's certainly at least a little bit more apt for that movie because it sounds like a Friday the 13th ripoff, and it's not. It's not like that at all. That reminds me, though, of the Butterfly. It reminds me of that damn Ashton Kutcher film. The Butterfly Effect. Yeah, you know? people would just be like, yeah. Yeah, but um, no, I don't know anything about that one either. That one's kind of just floating in the ether out there. Mojo's got another interesting question here. I mean, you've made some documentaries, but I guess he's asking about actual feature film I written and directed by just, the Slipster. Every, every year that goes by it seems less and less likely. Uh, I would love to, but it's just, I don't know. The industry's changed so rapidly, I don't even know how I would get financing for anything I'd want to do. Because I don't necessarily want to direct uh, horror movies right out the gate. You know, I have some other things I'd like to try. Uh, I love going to horror movies. I love watching horror movies. I love talking about horror movies, but I don't know if I'd want to make one right right out of the gate. Although I do have some ideas. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Guys, I wish I had an answer for you on that one. Are you here to announce Trick or Treat? No. Yeah. yeah. That's the other one. That's before. Not yet. No. Not yet, but I don't. I'm not working on it. And I don't know anyone else that is because, and I know who owns it, and they're not in production on it, and it's not coming out this year for sure. So, there you go. Well, hell. The Come Supernaturals, on. Charlie Varick. This is a movie nobody hardly ever asks about. It's it's not very good, but I think the, the most memorable thing about The Supernaturals is that cover art. Is it because the skull? Yeah. yeah, the yeah. skull with the army hat, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh... I think, I don't know if that's reverted back to who, the producers or not, because I thought it was an MGM title. Um, but uh, I think it would have been picked up and released by now, if it was. Um, and Armin Mastroani directed it, and I know he'd be happy to participate. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. All I remember about that movie was that Nichelle Nichols was a drill sergeant in it. Uh, she was like, 
from or whore from Star Trek. Yeah, she, mm-hmm. she was like a drill sergeant or something in that movie. Um, but that's all I really remember about that one. That uh, here's, art, here's some good ones. Midnight Hour is like a huge one because... Oh, yeah. Everybody keeps talking about that, too. That one yes. keeps going up and up and up. That old DVD from Anchor Bay. God damn. It's crazy. Yeah, Disney has that one. That one's over at Disney. And <laughs> So there's... No, 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 no. Well, they were licensing out for a while, but then they acquired Fox and everything got put on hold for a while. Um, I would imagine the doors will open back up someday, and I don't think that's one they'd mind letting back out. But that could be like a Monster Squad. That could be a real big hit if it ever came back out again. Because a lot of people remember that movie. Um, Fright Night 2 we talked about. Silent Night 3 and 5, those are over at Lionsgate. We've talked about those as possible Vestron titles too. But nothing I think yet. that would be a cool box set. It would do. be. I think if it was going to happen, it would be cool just to yeah. do all three of them together. Because um, they're so that. weird. But uh, And then I, Howling 4, 5, and 6. <laughs> That's Man, such... I would love to do, I, and, and especially part seven, which I subjected my friends to for movie night not long ago. It's which is one of the most gloriously misguided movies ever made. Uh, it's just if you've never seen Howling New Moon Rising, you've got to do it because you will not believe what you're watching while you're watching. It. Was that but, the one that I, never came out in the U.S. officially or something it did. like that? New Line Video put it out on VHS. Okay. And it, it, it was, and believe me, they were not proud of it. Uh, <laughs> they was, and it was one of those situations where they, oh, we can get a howling movie? Great. And then they probably got the master <laughs> and went, oh, Jesus! Oh, God! And then it's, it's, it's so bad. There's barely a werewolf in it. There's barely a, there's actually more clips of the werewolf from the other sequels than there is a new werewolf in that movie. And there's backlit country line dancing. It was all shot in this abandoned old West town called Pioneer Town. And it's just, it is one of the most laughable. I mean, there's, there's movie, there's, there's a shot where the guy comes up to somebody who's working on a motorcycle and goes, Hey, have you seen so-and-so? And he goes, he's over there. But my, well, why'd you look this way and that way if you knew he was right the fuck over there? You know, <laughs> or this is my favorite one. Uh, uh, hello, Sheriff? It's John. He wants to talk to you about the murders that happened all last week. He's like, it was like you had that for two <laughs> seconds. How did you get all that information? I mean, it was just, it's, it's, oh. Is it worse than the marsupial? Because, oh, like, the marsupials is actually intended to be a comedy. That movie is funny deliberately. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. shit. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. I always just watch that movie thinking, wow. Oh, it is. Really... No, that, that movie is nuts. But part seven is so bad. Because it's just, it's basically a, a, a big uh, ego trip for the guy, Clive Turner, who had had a hand in four, five, and six. And he tried to blend all three of those movies' plots into one movie. And so he, it just doesn't make any sense. It's oh god! It's probably it's, like Spookies. No, it, it makes none of it makes it, sense. Makes, it makes Spookies look like Memento. I mean, it's just it's fucking <laughs> wow. Oh, it's, yeah, well, oh, so that god. sounds like something Vinegar Syndrome would want. Then that's something anyone would want. I would, yeah. like, but I'm pretty sure that one was edited on video too, because so that one would be really hard to do a, a restored version of. Even saying restored Howling New Moon Rising <laughs> cracks me up. But uh, I would love to do it though, because God, Joe Bob would. Joe Bob has talked about it a lot, and he would be down for doing something for that if it ever came to light. I tell it's just you, one, it's just one of those movies where it's like, what the fuck? What happened here? Did that movie get released at all? Like, I mean, because I swear to God, I think I've got some sort of poster for it. Yeah. Oh yeah, there was. I have a poster for it. I was. Uh, it was released. Yeah. New Line Home Video had it out on VHS. Ooh. Okay, and that's as far as it ever went. Yeah, <laughs> that's, 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 that's it. What year did that come out? How old? Ninety five, ninety six. Oh, okay, somewhere so. in there. There was a time I know people find this hard to believe where you could go on eBay and buy like fifty poster lots for oh yeah, yeah. twenty five, thirty bucks, yeah. and just people didn't give a shit. And I think they're all required to have Howling New Moon Rising. In yeah, there that's it, that was it. Yeah, yeah. Because I have a folded poster for Howling New Moon Rising just to prove to people they did one, uh, but it's. <laughs> so no I, I would love to see what happens with the Howling sequels because they're such a weird ass bunch of movies and I, I love them 
this is another one we bring up all the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, Wes Ray mentioned maybe someone will find long lost elements for yeah. King Frat at an abandoned farmhouse. That's how it works sometimes. Someone will come say, I have this stuff. Does anybody want this? Holy shit. Um, no one knows where anything is for that movie. The people who produced it don't even know. Uh, there's just a lot of confusion over where the hell, what's happened with that movie. Well, there there would be some film prints. Should be, right? Around, maybe they can... Oh, there's film prints, sure. There's, there's yeah. a couple, that are, but they're so battered all to hell um, that it would be almost impossible. Because those, those, those have gotten a lot of screenings in recent years. Or, we got King Fred, 35 millimeter. It's held together by Band-Aids, Tape, and Hope. And that's, you know, <laughs> pretty much it. So, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. King Fred's going to be a hard one to kind of iron out. Well, that sucks. I love that movie. Um, Ost. It's another slasher movie from, I think, the mid-80s or something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything about where anyone has that one, but I think that's what a couple people have asked about that one. There was another one that, uh, I think Tarantino was playing a 35mm print of uh, Terror on Tour. Oh, have you heard Christ. anything? Why? <laughs> Why the <laughs> fuck would you? Well, they bought uh, Santa with Muscles. So, I mean, they're not yeah, very picky. Oh, man. Uh, Terror on Tour, I think that might still be over at MGM. I'm not sure. Um, along with classics like... Uh, what's the, the, Terror on Tour was one of those... How many of those heavy metal, hard rock movies, horror movies, did they make between, like, 84 and 88? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. had, like, hard rock zombies. Yeah, Slaughterhouse Rock. Yeah, and... Uh, October Blood, which I just watched, and it's fucking terrible. All the ones with the Thor guy in it. Um, oh, yeah, Rock and Roll Nightmare, Black yeah, Roses. Yeah. Trick or Treat, which was the best out of all of them by yeah, far. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, but there was just a whole slew of them. And Terror on Tour was in there. Yeah. Shock em Dead. Um, there's a whole bunch that were just like... A lot of horrible films. And, like, none of those none of were really... Were, yeah. And none of them were any good. They were just all bad movies, pretty much. This may be one you don't want to touch, but I, I'll ask it since Rambo's <laughs> on here. Yeah. What's your take on the Jaws 5 Severin Films kerfuffle, so to oh. speak? I don't really know much about it. Um, apparently, Have you seen Cruel Jaws? Let me ask you that. Oh, yeah. I watched that movie, and I was like, because we, we reviewed it on the show, and I was like, how the hell did anybody ever get the rights to this movie? There's like five different movies in that fucking movie. Oh, yeah. And that don't have anything to do no. with like the movie. You've no. got like old Italian shark films. You've got Jaws. Yeah, There's Jaws. actually like direct There's like scenes from, from Jaws. Jaws. in there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, yeah, that was probably not one that should have been touched. Um but, uh, well, I don't Screen know, I don't Factory any... announced it years ago, and then yeah, they and then, you're, then they went, <laughs> and then that stopped, and then uh, yeah. Severn brought it out. But um, I, I don't yeah, think I don't, I, I don't know what. Here's happened. what I think it is, and I don't know for sure. I think the slip cover that said "fucking Jaws 5 on it is what that prob- really that probably didn't help. Yeah, um, yeah, that probably didn't help. But then I would all it's like well because it's you know it, it it demeans the franchise. I'm like it demeans the franchise. You made Jaws 3D and Jaws: The Revenge. You're gonna talk to me about fucking demeaning exactly. the franchise. Exactly. I just watched the ending of Jaws five or four again the other day, and I'm just I watched both of them. Actually, technically there's three, but I watched the the two big endings, and I'm just like, how did this happen? I would actually rather watch Cruel Jaws than watch Jaws 4. I really oh, would. I would watch it again. Jaws, like Jaws 4 is one of those movies where after, when, it, when the ending happens, you're just like, so the shark roared like a lion, stood on its tail fin for five seconds, like a dolphin. above the water, of course, got speared by the boat, broke off and sank. That's stupid. But then they said, no, 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 we fixed it. And all the same shit happens, except this time when the boat hits it, the shark explodes. Right. Because, what? Why not? You know. And so it was I mean, it's, it's sharks it's, when they come in contact with wood vaporize. I, I thought yeah, that was a well-known fact about sharks. I, I was not aware of this, and I, I and and for me again, it all comes back down to the basic premise of that movie is, um, so she's 
thinking that the shark is hunting her family. But is she thinking it's the ghost of the shark? Or a relative of the shark? Or... The shark's son. I'm not clear on what she thinks. Because it's like... Who is the shark in comparison to the other sharks? I don't... Uh, and I'll, you know, that and she had a horrendous hairstyle in that movie too. Uh, well, really within gross. like ten, yeah. within ten minutes of that movie, she's going. This shark has got a death grudge against our entire family, and you're like, what? what? <laughs> it's like that's a hell. Of, yeah, again, that's like. Yeah. Well, that's a hell of a leap. Um, yeah. that, it's like, um, okay. And sure. then don't forget the chief Brody died of a fucking heart attack, right? Because right. of the shark, even though he he's the twice. he killed two of them. Yeah. But it drove him... He, yeah. yeah, apparently he was just walking around someday. Huh, well, you know, beat two sharks, what can you do? Oh, fuck! And they just, He's you know, the last guy to have a fucking heart attack about no. that, by the way. I was like, wait, oh my god, the reality of the shark situation just hit me. <laughs> uh, you know. Yep. No, what it really was, was I'm Roy Scheider, and I'm not doing another one of these fucking <laughs> movies. No, 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 no. I always like the rumor that there was once a... Uh, uh, so I, 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 an interviewer, somebody asked Dennis Quaid to say, "How did you get the role in Jaws 3? And he went, "I was in Jaws what now?" Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. apparently he was so loaded on cocaine for that whole film, yeah. he doesn't remember a single fucking thing about it. It's like you're probably best off. We got a couple of uh, questions about the Child's Play 4Ks is coming out. Have you seen the final mm. transfers of product or whatever? And what are your thoughts on it? I haven't seen them. I didn't work on them, so I, I haven't seen them. But uh, I'm, I'm sure they're going to look better than the DVDs that have been out there for 40 fucking years. Uh, so I'm looking forward to them. Well, for um, two. I'm not I'm not a big fan of three. No, I don't like three either. Iron Eagle or Hunter's Blood? Hunter's Blood's Blood. kind of a situation similar to Summer Camp Nightmare. It's just sort of in a weird nebulous ether out there. Um, I'm sorry, what was the other one he asked about? Um, Iron Eagle. Iron Eagle, yeah. Oh, um, I, yeah, I don't know. That's that's a very good question. That's odd. Uh, that one's not out actually. Yeah, uh, Iron Eagle. You would think because that that was a big hit, and it's a pretty mainstream movie. So, yeah. Do you know. think that uh, <clears throat> Rob Zombie's The Monsters trailer is a work? It can't be as bad as it looks, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I put po- I posted what a something great question. On, on I posted something on Facebook not long ago because. Uh, Back when they released that first teaser for the Monsters trailer, which was what ten seconds long or whatever the hell it was, yeah, right. Everybody was just beating up on Rob Zombie. It's like, oh, this is gonna t- fuck Rob Zombie. And I got kind of like, did this guy break into your house and rape your dog? What did? The, what has this guy ever done, other than make some movies you didn't like? He ruined everyone's childhood. Everyone I knows somehow, this. Somehow, yeah, I don't know how he did it. Uh, right, so I got, I was getting kind of pissed off. I was just like. Look, yeah, okay, he cast his wife and everything. Okay, fine, you don't like some of his movies. Whatever, who cares? I mean, th- th- if this is the worst that this guy's done, he hasn't done anything to you. And it, who's to say his Monsters movie won't be good? You know, I don't know. It may be, it, it, I just say relax and, and have a, you know, chill out. And then I saw that new trailer. And, um, <laughs> I knew that was coming. I got to be honest with you. Look, I'm still going to watch it. But I, I gotta say that trailer didn't really impress me. I think that's probably one of the worst trailers I've ever seen, and that's saying like a whole. It just I don't know. There's something about the aesthetic feels very cheap. Yes, like it the way it's like shot it, and yeah, I don't, everything. Yeah, I don't know, and I don't understand that. But again, it's a trailer. I'll still watch the final movie and judge it on its own merits. But that was not a good trailer in my estimation at all. It was no. That was certainly not the trailer to convert people or to convince people to give it a shot. Um, it was, I want to say the R rated, uh, Rob zombies, the monsters. That's what I'm waiting on. I'm sure it'll come out on Blu-ray or whatever. Yeah. Do you have a favorite commentary that, uh, you've went back to a couple of times or one that you were a part of? I know you've been a part of a lot of them. Oh, that's hard to say. I love the commentary for Chud with Daniel Stern and John Hurd. (laughs) They are, they're just ripping on the movie and on themselves, and it, it's a blast. It is so much fun. Uh, funny, he mentioned the cast commentary for da- uh, Dawn of the Dead, which I, I, I don't normally you know, raise my hand and say, I did this, but that was my, when we were putting that thing into production, 
I said, we're doing a commentary with the four cast members. I don't give a fuck how we do it. So I ended up arranging all that. I arranged it to travel, wow. from, get the people. And we recorded it in the Helmsley Hotel conference room in New York. And it was all four of them. It was the first time all four of them had been together since the movie had come out. Wow. And uh, Galen showed up. It was, everybody was there. And we are all just like, and we were all like, I had met Scotty. I knew Scotty and Ken and David Emge. A little bit, but I had no one. Galen was the big question mark. It's like, well, how's she gonna be about this? Uh, is she gonna be kind of quiet or timid? Or is it? She came in there and she just owned everything. She was just like, oh, let's do this. It's gonna be a blast. And it was so much fun. Um, there's a picture I have of me and four of them right after we finished, and I'm just like this because <laughs> it was like, oh my god, we got a commentary with the four cast members of Dawn of the Dead. This is like bucket list shit that I never thought I'd ever get to do and it was just so funny to listen to they ripped on David a lot because of his walk or you know sometimes it's like he's so clumsy in the movie at times it's like ah oh, look at David what are you doing there David what are you doing and David Emge's like I'm in character <laughs> my character is clumsy therefore I am clumsy <clears throat> it was really fun and they had a great time and that was a really wonderful memory um the Faces of Death commentary I did with the director was a blast. Because I learned so much while I was doing it. You know, it's just like, you know, there's a drinking game for you. Every time I say, oh, really, in that commentary, you'll be drunk in about five minutes. Cause I, well, that I was, was just, probably, back when that came out, that was one of the early Blu-rays, wasn't it? I mean, that, it was. That it was, was. Yeah, that was yeah. like 06 or 07 or something like so that. So that one had yeah. not been out on DVD or anything before either. Uh, yeah, so was, there was, was the a lot time. of questions... Yeah. That a lot of people and probably didn't know. Trying yeah. to separate fact from fiction. And the director had never wanted to go on camera, and he didn't use his real name again. And uh, and it's not the guy who took credit all those years, John Allen Schwartz. That was not the guy. He was not the real director of that movie. Um, this was another guy entirely. And uh, he was really grateful and really cool. To, and he was just very honest. He was like, well, that shot, you know, that's real. But then the second shot right here, that's fake. And now we're back to the real footage. So sometimes it would be a combination of it. And then like there's a scene in the movie where a body washes up on shore. And he said, yeah, it's a real body. We were out there shooting something else, and this body just washed up. <laughs> so we just ran over and started filming it, and we just made up some shit later on about it. It was, like, we didn't, it was just the weirdest thing. Some guy had gotten high on angel dust or something and had taken a dive off the Santa Monica Pier, drowned, and then just washed up while they were out there. And it was just like, okay. Well, it's, it's like, yeah, it's like, on the one hand, it's like, well, that was good luck for us, but I don't think that's how <laughs> we should really interpret this. No. Uh, like, good luck, guy died. Uh, no, that's not good. You know, so it's just, <laughs> yeah, but it was fascinating. So those are the ones that, you know, the ones I've worked on. And then some of the other ones I've listened to, like Evil Dead 2 is fun. Any of the Evil Dead 2 commentaries. Um, anything with Bruce Campbell, you know. Any Anything with... Um... Carpenter and, uh, and Russell together. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. those guys are great. I mean, so yeah, there's always certain ones that are uh, a blast. Yeah. I always like listening to commentaries with Toby Hooper in. Like, that's one guy that we never did get to speak with. Uh, but he just seemed like, like, of course, the hippie type, but such a chill freaking guy. Just to- Toby was. Yeah, he yeah. really was. And I did a, I, I produced several Blu rays and DVDs of his, but I only got to moderate one commentary with him. And that was for Invaders from Mars. And <laughs> Toby was just so laid back that I ended up having to kind of edit some of his responses because he would, like I would ask him, so how did how did Invaders from Mars become one of the three titles that you did for Canon? Oh, yeah, 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 man, yeah. Well, you know, it, wow, wow, yeah, yeah, <laughs> man, yeah. And I was like, okay. And he would eventually get to it, but it would just be like, four hours of yeah 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 so i so, so i gotta take a little bit of that down but he was so gracious and a really really smart guy like he could engage you on conversations that had nothing to do with the movie about you know history and world history and stuff like that that was just fascinating and really really just a great accommodating dude and someone i wish i had gotten i got to meet him in person once and uh that was really great but then getting to moderate uh Invaders from Mars was really special and fun and produced Fun House and, uh, of course, Chainsaw 1, 2. And then what was the other one of his I did? I just recently did. 
Oh, Mangler. I did Mangler recently. But I think there was one other one I did, but I can't remember. There's a, a TV one that's coming out that I think uh, you're working on. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's right. I'm Dangerous Tonight. I did that yeah. one for Kino. Yeah, that one was another I've one. never seen that one, so I'm interested. It's in fun. It. It's a fun little movie. I mean, it's very much a TV movie, but it's got... It's beautifully filmed. It's got some really great actors in it. And Toby's having a lot of fun with that one. And I think people will really get a kick out of it. Because it's not one of his more well-known. He did a lot of television work. And he did a lot of really good television work. And it doesn't get the attention that his uh, features do. But uh, I, hopefully this will help rectify that. Wes Ray's got another one about uh, Extreme Prejudice. Uh, I was wondering if it, that one's so well enough for Vestron to take chances on other action flicks on blu-ray for example linda blair's night force i would love to see that night force would be a great one to do the problem is there's no existing hd master for that so we have to really go back and start over with that and that's always more expensive and that's also going to be a smaller title that's not going to sell what i'm imagining extreme prejudice has been so i i don't know what the sales figures are but i believe they're very happy with it um so yeah, it's a possibility that because we want to diversify the line as much as possible, because Vestron was a very diversified label. You could get everything right. from Monster Squad to House by the Cemetery to George Carlin specials on Dirty Dancing, boss. Yeah, Dirty, Dirty Dancing. Dancing. Yeah, that was that was a trick Vestron or treat. Picture. That was a big seller. Uh, um, trick or treat never came out on Vestron, so oh yeah, yeah. not yet at least. Uh, not, not yet. Don't even start with me. Um, I'll hang the fuck up right now. <laughs> Uh, Rambo <laughs> Watchers 2 came out recently from uh, Scream Factory. Any details on the first Watchers or the Car- Carnosaur films getting a release from any company? The first Watcher Watchers movie is tied up or it was released theatrically kind of by Universal, but Roger Corman's company was the producer on it, but Studio Canal has a hand in it. No one knows who really owns that movie. So it's just kind of law it's just kind of again in this weird limbo um and carnosaur carnosaur is over that's that's screen factory they own the corman catalog and so they could do uh carnosaur i think pretty much whenever they want and i don't know why they haven't no I i'm sure they will at some point love if they own do it. carnosaur that would be so much fun light of day is another one that we brought up mm-hmm. before uh light Joan of day Jett. is over at paramount that's over at, that's part of that <laughs> republic catalog along with monster squad um, so that's where that is. Well, and I know the, some of the music was Bruce Springsteen's music. I wonder if that has something to do with him coming out it with could, it. It could, it could, although I don't, I don't know for certain. Um, but I would have thought they would have cleared that because that's a pretty big. Um, well, and he wrote it. It's just, he has a writing credit it for the it. movie. So right. it was like, you know, but, um, but yeah, no, I would love to see like uh, Joan Jett. I love Joan Jett. She's really good in that movie. Paul Schrader directed that one too. That would be a good thing to get him to talk about. God bless. There's so many questions that like you lose. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting lost on here. You're getting lost. Slippery, slippery. <laughs> Hurry, goddamn. Hurry, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people chit chatting back and forth on here. Somebody asking about Friday Night 2 again. <laughs> um,. I think there's some stuff coming out later on this year from Arrow that they haven't announced yet. Uh-huh. Is All the people maybe... I know at Arrow have left, pretty much. Oh, okay. Um, so I don't really... I haven't done a whole lot. The last thing I did for them is Phantom of the Mall. Um, so I haven't... I'm not working on anything else for them at the moment. Um, but So I couldn't really tell th- you what's... Have we talked to you since the whole thing with the sheet came out, Slippy? The on sheet? the internet? Yeah, where the... Like, there was the sheet from Arrow, supposedly... That somebody leaked that had like every title that they were getting ready to release. Oh yeah, like yeah, it has like a. Code. I think they put that on yeah. purpose. They did. They leaked that. On did they? Yeah. yeah, that was. Well, yeah, I've, yeah. One of them for sure that's coming out. I mean, I don't know when, but uh, I think Barbara Crampton posted that they were doing interviews and stuff for its Reanimator, um, which I don't know for sure if it's Arrow, but they did it last on Blu-ray. I'm guessing it's a 4K. Yeah, because they need to go back and restore it. They have. They don't have a 4K. They didn't at least until recently have a 4k master on that so they would uh that's one that they would need to go back and start over and or at least uh, do a new 4k master on i don't know who's got it and i, can't I think uh, what else you could possibly do for it at this point but the, anything with barbara craft you know, i love barbara oh yeah she, i mean she was she was my horror scream queen 
I'm not a big fan of that term, but she was she was the one for me when I was growing up. I gotta tell you, I loved her, and I interviewed Man, and her. she still looks great too. Oh Barbara my god! Has defied time yeah. and space, oh. and I don't know how the hell she's done it. I want yeah. her secret, um, but she. Um, I arranged an interview with her for From Beyond back in 2013, I think it was when Screen Factory did it. And I communicated with her. I talked to her at a convention about it. And we set it up. And then I haven't really seen or communicated much with her over the years. And uh, was walking by her at Texas Frightmare Weekend a couple years ago, right before the pandemic. And I walked by her. And she went, oh, hey, Michael, how you doing? And I went, <laughs> Barbara Crampton <laughs> remembers me. <laughs> and I just got up. I was like, <laughs> And so it was just like, that's. I, I just became a kid really quick, uh, but she's she's wonderful. She's, she's just, one of the few people too that's had like a resurgence. She has in like she's, from yeah, yeah. you know, once a couple she started of different doing, times like, actually. Yeah, because uh, you know when she started doing movies like came back and did like your next. Yeah, and a couple of those other films and Jacob's wife was one. Yeah, that yeah. was a couple yeah. of years ago. It was really yeah. good. And she's a re- she's a really good actress. That's the thing about it. She's always been really really good. Uh, so it's wonderful to see her getting that attention again. But I, Black, I, I Black Christmas 2006. That seems like one Screen Factory would want. Well, that's again, that's a Miramax title, and that would be over Paramount. So that's that. Okay. Is it really? Is there that much of a call for Black Christmas 2006? Well, I mean, they've got like how many different well, versions of Black Christmas is out? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? You know what the Lord fuck? Fucking... <laughs> why not do it? Someone, John, I this... lost a spot here. I think I may have skipped it. Uh, the Hitcher in the United States. We all know the Hitcher's coming out uh, second sight. Yeah. Doing a 4K, which I cannot wait. That's probably oh, my, my yeah. most highly anticipated title for the last I five or six years. I love The Hitcher so much. That's yeah. such a great, great movie. Um, HBO has it here. Uh, and um, They just don't license stuff, right? Or, do, or even do a lot of catalogs. And they just don't. You know, it's yeah. just one of those ones that, but, but the good news is, um, that, that led to the, when the, when second side announced they were doing a history, but they said, well, yeah, we're, we've got materials and we're going to do the best we can, but we don't know where the negative is. And I'm like, has anyone asked Warner brothers? Cause Warner brothers owns HBO and I'm sure it's there. Sure enough. That's where it was. So that's like they got, so they got access to the negative. So they're they're doing a restoration from the negative. Yeah, so I'm, so, I can't wait. Oh, for that. I love, I love Hitcher. I think that the Hitcher is one of those movies. Going back to what we we're talking about earlier on, like when the Monster Squad came out in uh, 2007 on DVD. Mm-hmm. I think the Hitcher is kind of like that because a lot of people you have no way of really watching the Hitcher unless you have the old twenty. Well, it's gotten DVD. some really good releases overseas over the years. It was a French DVD. I think it had tons of interviews on it. And, like, had Rucker Howard, everybody from Rucker Howard to the director to the everybody. And it just never got any domestic love, ever. Mm-hmm. It had one DVD release that HBO did that had nothing on it. Well, and even, they even remade the movie and didn't do anything And you, you would have thought that would have yeah. happened. You know, but they only just didn't do shit. Rucker Howard made some really, really good films that nobody ever really like see, no. or must have not seen or talk about to this day. Like Blind, a Blind Fury. Fury. I love Blind Fury. He's so much just yeah, uh, nice. Wanted Dead or Alive is another one that I Wanted Dead or Alive. Uh, uh, did, what's uh, the one with the alien? The um, Split uh, Second. Split, split Second. second. Yeah. That just came out again. But I mean, yeah. for a long time, like the, I mean, nobody ever referenced that one either. But. Oh yeah, I mean, he was he was just he was such a commanding actor and. The stuff he did with Verhoeven was really great too. The early work, and even like Flesh and Blood, and you know movies like that. I mean, he was, he was great. And yeah, it was a shame that a lot of those movies didn't connect when they first came out. But God, the Hitcher, he's, he's just so fucking yeah. unstoppable. Yeah. That. Oh man. We have 121 people in here, so thumbs really? up the video, boys. I know. Thumbs it up. Thumbs up, because that helps us a lot. Come I don't on. Know, you know. The, alg- the algorithms and the trickery uh-huh. that everybody on YouTube does with their scr- you know, yeah. these screenshots. <laughs> I need to fucking figure this out. Yes, these screenshots. Do. We need some bots. That's what bots? we need. Yeah, let's go to Fiverr.com and buy some bots like everybody else does. Hey, bots, let's go bulls. buy some bots. <laughs> bots, bulls. Bulls bots. Bulls bots. 
the Bots Bulls. Lunch meat, nineteen eighty seven. God damn it! I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I was told that there's no way that's ever coming out. I don't know why. I, but I, I don't know. I remember hearing something similar about that too, but I don't know what's going on. All I remember is the the cover for that was just some greasy fat dude with an arm going, Hey, <laughs> boys! Yeah. <laughs> Look, like, well, mate! So I never bothered to rent it because I'm just like, nah. No. Well, you got to no. think if it was possible that that thing could come out, Vinegar Syndrome would have had oh, that would have been one it. of their firsts. Yeah. Yeah, there'd be a fucking 4K of that right now. If it was <laughs> well, it's like uh, Elves was one that I know oh, that they God, wanted yeah. bad, but yeah. I don't think that the you know I don't think the source material exists anymore. That's what I heard. Yeah, or it's Dan Haggerty smoking all the <laughs> marbles in the fucking world. Hey, like, I'm like, carrying around my box of Winston's <laughs> the whole movie. Winston. I'm doing goddamn elves. Shit. I'm fucked. You know, I yeah. swear to God, he must have told him at the beginning of that, listen, I can help you with this movie, but we're going to get it financed through this cigarette company, so I'm just going to be smoking like a madman through the whole thing. I'm just going to be smoking like a motherfucker through this whole goddamn movie. That's There's going to be a permanent fog around my head. You won't even know it's me, boss. The uh, Midnight Ride with Michael Dudikoff and Mark Hamill. Oh Mark Hamill is a hitchhiking slasher. Yeah, I don't. That's why I haven't even thought about that one in years. Never even heard of that. Anytime you got Mark Hamill playing a bad guy is fun, because he would he, he would he would just he loved that. Because back you know he wouldn't get a lot of acting roles. He you know Luke Skywalker kind of pigeonholed him for a while, but unless it was a voiceover gig, he didn't get a lot of heavies as an actor. So whenever he had a chance to really rip into a character like that, he's a lot of fun. Um, but I haven't seen that movie in years. I don't even know who owns that one. I don't know. Not this is one I haven't heard of before either. Not Life with Scott Grimes and John Aston. Yeah, that one we were gonna do. Um, I won't say which company was gonna do it, but we were gonna do it. And I actually I've pr- produced two interviews for it. Um, but then they couldn't. Fu- there was there's no HD master of that because the last time it got released was on VHS, and uh, unfortunately uh, they couldn't find the negative. Just don't know where it is. And it's a major studio that owns it, too. They're just like, I don't know. And that was the end of that. So until that gets cleared up, that one won't be coming out either. But it's a really underrated zombie movie. Really, really underrated. Somebody mentioned that Howling 7 is actually on Amazon Prime right now. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yes, and Pioneer Town is open. You're right. It is open as a tourist attraction. So you can go there and point out, oh, look, that great scene from Howling <laughs> 7 was shot here. <laughs> And they actually acknowledge it. But people, from what I understand, because I actually had some friends that were there not too long ago, and I think they mentioned that to us. So I was like, hey, wasn't that movie Howling 7 shot here? <laughs> yeah, 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 it was. That's yeah. a classic, Bulls. Yeah, so they acknowledge it, but they're not happy about it. Home sweet home, Bulls. No! A, a 4K <laughs> home sweet home is what we need. No. That film, I feel like that film haunts you. Like just <laughs> no, that home thing was home. awful. I would gladly are produce you? a Blu-ray of it. Well, but hey, are you um, kidding me? Flesh Eater is out in 4K, so That's there's true. always hope. Yeah. You know, I know. him That's shooting PCP into his tongue and running over old women. Are you kidding? That's not great. <laughs> what, what was it? That Fright Night Film Fest? We did the commentary for that. At was that? I think yeah, that? yeah, it must yeah. have been that, or yeah, I believe it was. I think it was Fright Night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh God. Frighteners 4K. Have you heard anything? Arrow's been working on it forever, evidently. No, I don't know anything about that, but if I had to hazard a guess, and this is completely a guess, two words, Peter Jackson. Yep. Whoa! Yay! Well, he was supposedly working on, like, all his uh, movies, right? Up until... Yeah, this is... He's been saying that. Yeah. But I also am very worried about that because he said that he's also applying some of that technology that he used on the Get Back documentary, the Beatles doc, to kind of help enhance the 60 millimeter footage. Ah, fuck. And that, I'm sorry. I know people loved Get Back, or a lot of people did. That technology made that footage look like dog shit. I couldn't watch it. I couldn't, because everyone looked like wax figures, and it did, there was no depth he, to anything anymore, and it was really, really weird. He's going to end up doing like a fucking George Lucas and screwing up those movies. I'm I guarantee worried. you. I am. I am understandable because I don't want to see that. Now it's just like no. It looks. It looks awful. 
and I and I I love his early movies. Meet the Feebles is my favorite film of his. Well, actually, it's funny. I have my favorite film, and then there's his best movie. His best movie is Heavenly Creatures. My favorite movie is Meet the Feebles. Like Sam Raimi, my his my favorite Evil Dead Two. His best movie is A Simple Plan. Yeah. So there's a difference between favorite and best, and. Uh, and I love Bad Taste. That's still one of the most insanely creative d- debuts I've ever seen a director give. And then Dead Alive is like, how much goddamn gore can there be in one fucking movie? And I'm um, curious to see the Frighteners in 4K, though, just because that CG, like, yeah. it's kind of dated on Blu-ray or DVD even. I couldn't imagine on 4K unless he, he went back and That movie I've had it. sort of a like-not-like relationship with. Though. I mean, I've never been super crazy about it. But there are things about it I really love. Like, for me, anytime Dee Wallers or Jeffrey Combs is on the screen, that movie just springs to life. Yeah. Because she's just insane in that picture. And then he is bug fuck nuts from another dimension in that movie. Je- I mean, Jeffrey Combs in, in that Agent Dammers, that character is so fucking out there. It's like, how did this character ever end up on the screen? This guy is so bizarre and so twisted and fucked up. That I don't. I don't just, think people really knew what to make out of that because no it's not knew. like no Ghost, but the people that is going to be like Ghostbusters or something like that. No, you know, and it wasn't and like it was, that at all. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. It was a film that has a very, it's twisted and weird, but it's not. It's still PG thirteen. Yeah. So it's not enough of a twist. You know, I don't know. I, I and it's weird because it's supposed to take place in America, and I never believed for a second that it was in America. It always feels like it's in New Zealand or some foreign country. Because there's just something about the way it looks and feels. It's like, this isn't in America. Um, but, you know, look, I, I like it, but it's one I, I'll revisit when the 4K eventually comes out. But again, I have no proof of why it's delayed whatsoever. But if I had to hazard a guess, it's Peter Jackson. Uh, this guy's asked about the deleted kill scenes in Killer Party f- a few times tonight. I am Dade Scott. You know I anything about involved. that? That was Extreme Factory title I wasn't involved with, so I can't speak to why that didn't did or did not happen. I don't know why. Shit on me. Yeah. I wish I uh, wish I had any more information for you, but that one I didn't have anything to do with. Oh, here's I'm surprised it took this long for somebody to ask about Blood Beach. <laughs> I don't know. What, every now and then something flares up about that movie and like Code Red was gonna do it. And they but then that didn't happen, and then then the elements are missing, and then they're not, and then it's a rights issue, and then it's not. I don't know. I, 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 that's really weird. Uh, I don't understand what's going on with that. There's another one that I, I'm like, uh, yeah. why is that not out on Blu-ray or 4K? May? May. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, I think, still over at Lionsgate for the time being, and uh, it may revert back to the producers at some point soon. Dude, that would be a killer best drawing. Uh, yeah. Oh, I would I love think. to do it. I'd love to do it. Roman and, and May be, were both great. Yeah, there might be... I don't know. I, we we haven't really talked about that one very much. But uh, I would love to... I mean, that's a great movie. It's a terrific movie. It would be an awesome movie for you to work on, though, Slippy, if that were ever going to happen anytime in the near future. I would love to do it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I, I haven't... I used to know Angela Bettis a little bit back when I was sort of the, the earlier convention days, and she was great, and... I've communicated with Lucky a couple times over the years. The 1979 TV movie Vampire with Richard Lynch, E.G. Marshall, and Jason Miller. God, Vampire! That, ca- that cast alone. Uh, I don't know. A lot of these TV movies, it's hard to say because sometimes the networks have an ownership in them, but then sometimes it's a production company that did like 12 films for them that year that own it. So you never know really exactly who owns what or what's going on with that. But There's some actors, though, that, like, if I see they're in it, I want to watch it. And Richard Lynch is one of those oh, guys. Oh, yeah, because you, yeah. you always know he's doing something interesting. Yeah. He, also, know. in real life, was always, like, you never knew what he was going to do, by the yeah. way. I watched... I've always, uh, had, I've always had a great deal of regret. God about, told me to, where he's in it a oh, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I saw I like that, that one movie a lot. recently. Yeah, that's a kind of ahead of its time, really. It all really the was. stuff that was, was going it's, on. It, it's he, not a horror movie, but it's not. It's science fiction, and it's, dry, it's a little bit of everything. Yeah. Because that's typical of Larry Cohen. I mean, he, he would do. He, he he blended genres all the time. Um, but Richard Richard Lynch was always kind of a regret because uh, 
I wasn't present for the interview. A couple of friends of mine uh, did it. His interview for Bad Dreams. It was not terribly long before he passed away. And I think he might have been in like the early stages of dementia at the time. The interview was just all over the place. And he was really in really bad shape. He couldn't focus. And he was getting like crying and emotional about, about things that had nothing to do with what was... It was really awkward. Hmm. And the final piece, he's barely in it. Because I just couldn't find anything to use. And there were times where it's like, God, I almost wish I hadn't even bothered the man. You know? Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know... I'd always kind of wondered about that, too. Because the time that I met him... It was the same kind of thing. Like, he was just, you could tell there was something. Like, I thought it was just, you know, he was drunk or something. Because that's normally what happens in situations yeah, like yeah. that. But no, I don't know. There was something else. I, mean, I can't, I'm yeah. not a, I don't want to say it, but it seemed like, in, in, in retrospect now, because I actually looked at that footage not too long ago because I was doing some inventorying of some stuff. And I was just like, oh man, this is, this is hard to watch. Yeah. This is really hard to watch. Blood Frenzy from 1987 or Don Coscarelli's Survival Quest? I think Survival Quest is still over at Fox. Um, that's where Anchor Bay got it originally when they licensed it for their Odd DVD. Odd movie. Um, so I don't know. That's probably where it still is. Unless something has changed. But um, that's all I know about that. And the other title, I don't, I don't know. I think it's another slasher movie. Yeah, Blood Frenzy. Back yeah. in the day. Are we ever going to run out of 80 slasher movies to no, put out? No. I don't think so, yeah. No, that's not possible. Psycho Cop. I think Vinegar Syndrome's coming out with that. Yeah, I think they right. are. I think so. Sword House Massacre 2 would be over at Screen Factory if that's still part of the Corman catalog. Dr. Giggles. Dr. Giggles. That's how I've been curious about the that. Dr. Giggles collection. is at Warner Brothers. And I think, I'm sure at some point, I'm sure that Screen Factory would have asked about that one. Because um, it was Universal, but it's a production company, I think Largo, they, their titles went over to Warner Brothers. So I think that's where Dr. Giggles is now. And what were the other ones? Um, The Dennis 1 and 2. Oh, those have been talked about for restaurant. Uh, those have been discussed. So I'm hoping that those will be sooner rather than later. But, you know. We'll uh, Tony T's got an interesting one here. Pamela Springsteen, do you ever see her doing a commentary for Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3 if they were to do a 4K? She has just never really talked or acknowledged. She just has totally moved on from that. Um, I left her a mess couple messages at her gallery in New York, I think, and it was clearly her voice on the answering machine. <laughs> and I just Did like, she sing the Happy Camper song? On the I wanted, yeah, that was probably not a bit of good. It's just like... <laughs> But um, uh, she's never responded back, and uh, I don't know if that'll ever happen. I wish she would, because she's heard... so much. She's so much fun in those two movies, and I, and I, and not, I, and I'm not saying that as like, oh, she's so bad, she's good. She's legitimately really fun in in those two movies, and uh, she's actually the really only reason to sit through part three, in my estimation. Uh, but I just. Uh, I've only ever heard one story of anybody like getting any contact back from her. Mm -hmm. And it was somebody on here that mentioned that they had written to her about something to do with acting or something like that mm -hmm. and sent it to her and probably like asked for an autograph or something too, but they didn't get the autograph, but she wrote back to them and gave them like advice about acting and stuff like that. Yeah. Cause by all accounts from all the people who work with her, she had a good time on the movies. It's so bizarre though. Like how yeah. do you just completely well, they like, they couldn't even get her back to do like the, they filmed those movies back to back, right? They were pretty much back to back and yeah, she wouldn't were. even do the artwork for the posters, right? Like, po right. like photos yeah. and all that. No, she so she was probably, immediately over that, those yeah, movies. She just, she, apparently she just kind of moved on with her life real quickly after that. And that was the end of it. Um, we already talked about, uh, dead, dead well, alive. kind of dead alive. Yeah. yeah. Ralph Bakshi, uh, flicks, yeah. the movie. Well, they just announced Rock that cool, cool world's coming out, but who okay. cares? Um, never mm. liked Cool World very much. Was that the one with Brad Pitt? Yeah. Oh yeah. god, that movie sucks. I Kim ask. Bassinger. Yeah. Brad Pitt. Gabriel Byrne. Um, and the, but someone's doing one of the Fritz movies. I think Kino is or somebody. Or, I've or, got the movie. Uh, is it called Wizards or something like that? Yeah. I think it, like yeah. Sony or somebody did that back in the Fox day. Fox or somebody did that. Yeah. yeah. But um, now I don't only really know much more about those. Sorry, I wish I had more answers for you on some of this stuff, but I, I really, 
I can only uh, tell you what I know or don't. Hunter's know. blood. Did we ask about Hunter's blood? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah that yeah, one. That's, came okay. up. that's just kind of floating around out there somewhere. Yeah, somebody will eventually get it. I'm sure. I hope so. That's a good little movie. Billy Bob Thornton has a very brief, brief, brief part in that, uh, but that would be cool. Uh, here's a good one. I don't know if you want to answer it. What's the worst movie that you've ever done features <laughs> for? I can think of one right oh, off God. the bat. See, I'm reluctant to say anything because you grow to love all the stuff you work because you, you you hear the stories about the making of the movie and you really come to admire the effort that went into these things. And it's like they made a movie. You know, a lot of people talk about it, but they never get around to doing it. But these people made a fucking movie. You know, um. But, you know, Nail Gun Massacre. <laughs> uh, is, what about is, the, uh, didn't you work on that Children of the Corn TV movie? Oh, yeah, you're right. Nail Gun Massacre is way better than yeah, that. Yeah, um, yeah. That Children, That's exactly we, the one I was thinking of, too. Yeah. That Children, yeah, we shot live on the set for that. And it was one of the most unhappy sets in, like, movie history. And everyone hated the director and no one wanted to be there. And, and he went back. The guy who directed it, Donald Borchers, who had produced the original film, he went back to the original story and did what he called a much more faithful reinterpretation. And the couple in the original story was, like, on the verge of divorce. And he put that into the remake. But the problem was they're arguing and yelling at each other from the beginning so much that it's just like, oh, God, corn God, kill him. Kill him. Hurry up. I don't have time for this shit. Kill him, please. And so, yeah, it was not, that one didn't turn. And you know what? Nail Gun Massacre, it's easy to beat up on that movie, but that movie is a fucking delight to watch. It's so much fun. And I have some really nice memories of Terry Lofton, the director. He knew what he had made. He, he knew damn well that he had made Nail Gun Massacre. And he was just thrilled that uh, people out there enjoyed the movie. And he made a movie, you know? With very little resources, he found a way to fucking make a movie. And uh, so, yeah, some of these movies objectively are not good, but there's there's value in them. So I don't really want to bash too many other ones, but I'll, I'll bash the children remake. Yeah, fine. you should. That's, yeah, that, that, that one's that one's yeah. There's no matter. harm in that. Everybody not, pretty much. Not a great one. Not a great one at all. <laughs> the '80s British anthology Screen Time. I have a sticker for that movie. I have a. They did a a, a, a prism sticker for Scream Time. I don't know why. I think I. I think I may have had that on VHS or something. Yeah. Now, I don't know anything about that. But I don't remember it at all. That, but I know that they, they did a prism sticker for it for some reason. Cemetery <laughs> Man. Oh, See, yeah. this is where I got in trouble once because I was in, in communication with a company that was this close to closing a deal on it. And I mentioned, yeah, there's a, someone's going to do it soon. And then that deal fell apart. And now it's always been out there. Well, what happened to what Flippy said about there being a Cemetery Man? So I don't know what's going on. Last I heard, the people who owned it were holding on to it because they were going to do a remake or a new reboot or something of it or something. I don't know. No. The Night Brings Charlie or Junior. I have heard. <laughs> I have heard. There's a, someone wants to do Night Brings Charlie. I have heard that. Uh, but that's another one that was edited on video, and you'd have to go back and reconstruct it from the ground up. But that's all I, I know. But I don't well, know. Well, that would be know. something that you would do. I mean, the vendor oh, would, sooner. Yeah, you know. I would do it. I would do it. Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3. I, I urge people all the time on, on the show because people are paying outrageous amounts for these fucking Screen Factory releases. And I'm like, those movies at some point in time are going to come back out. They're, they're, yeah, I they mean, will. Someone's yeah. going to pick them back up because, I mean, it's, 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 you know, that series is still so popular. For reasons I will never fully understand. You let people pay a hundred dollars for two and three. Yeah, God, uh, but you can go ahead. Man. Yeah, but whenever the new edition comes out, that's going to go. Well. Yeah, because look, if Flesh Eater can get four K, you will know there'll be four Ks of two and three at some point. Somebody, I mean, never mind. The Willies. That's like a kids anthology horror top. Yeah, deal. Prism put that out as I recall back in the day. I don't know much about that beyond that. Remember the wheelies? We all got the wheelies. We all had the wheelies at one time. <laughs> the graveyard from '74. No, I don't know that one. I'm not familiar with that one either. Um, shoot from 1976 with Cliff Robertson and Ernest Borgnon. Deliver uh, trip off. Yeah, I don't know who owns it, but I'm I'm vaguely familiar with that movie. 
but these I are some never... deep these, cuts. Yeah. yeah, these are these are some good ones. Is Boobenstein? This is a super <laughs> chat from Pablo. Blocking the, the black and white Martin uncut release. No. Oh God. Not strictly speaking, though, he's not blocking it. Boobenstein. Because. <laughs> And look, Richard, I've, I've, I've had some dealings with Richard. Over, he's always been really great with me. So I can't, and I don't, he gets cast as a villain a lot when it comes to George's legacy. And I don't think that's fair, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, look, he's, he's his own man. He does things his way, and that's just how it is. Um, but the Martin print thing, he's not, he controls Martin, the, the intellectual rights to it. But the print thing, he doesn't. He's not standing in the way of that at this time because hmm. it's still in flux. Um, but hopefully in the future, something will be ironed out and we'll see what happens with that. Let me ask you this, Steve, because, I mean, you've had some dealings with him. Somebody brought this up and I never really considered it. But do you think that, like, one of his aims is to kind of preserve those films so that they're not, like... You know, some of the other films that get like a thousand different releases that they just exploit like over and over and over again. Well, he wants to maintain their value, sure. Um, you know, you don't want it to ever become a situation where it's just another movie out there and it's not generating any interest or revenue for anybody. So he's very careful about where they're placed and when they come back out. And, um, you know, I mean, I can't, again, I don't want to speak for him because I can't get inside his mind, but he. He's very proud of his association with George and the films they made together. It's a hell of a legacy that, you know, that those two well, It's interesting, have. though, because Dawn of the Dead in particular, like, is that on any streaming channel at all? No, 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 it's not. And it's not been released here in the United States since what? What was the Anchor Bay release? Like 2008? Anchor, the Anchor Bay Blu-ray, yeah. Yeah, the 2008 Blu-ray. So, I mean, I just don't understand... He does things at his own pace and to his own liking, and that's just how it is. That's how it. That's how it's always been. And that's the bottom line, son. <laughs> I, I can't really get into any more than that. That's just how it is, you know. Um, Alpha Romero, are you a fan of American movie that needs yeah. a Blu-ray or a 4K release? I agree. Yeah, I with think that. Sony has that one. Um, that was one of their sony classics releases or something i think i have fucking um, movies i love I that love, movie, no, I'd like actually. To see, I, sure why not i love that yeah. movie coven what is it the not guy coven. says coven. the guy he, he, it's, uncle it's bill okay. was in it's that all right there was an uncle bill <laughs> in it yeah he delivered yeah. that line yeah <laughs> terror on tape that's like yeah. a clip yeah deal, I, I think it is i, I can't yeah. remember that one too much but yeah that one would be Probably rights issues holding that one up forever. Lone Wolf eighty eight. Not sure. Mm. <laughs> Clown House. <laughs> oh yeah, that, I, I would. That's one it. Slippy wants to work on right now. Yeah, yeah come I'll on. Get a commentary with the lead actor and the director on that. That'll be really. Yeah. Be, yeah Have the, be, yeah. You could you could be the moderator of that commentary there. Yeah, wouldn't that be awkward <laughs> yeah. as fuck? Oh man. Well, Scream uh, Factory, did, didn't did Scream Factory, like, toy with the idea of releasing that at one time or something? No, I don't think that, I, I mean, at least I don't think they ever did, because they did the Jeepers Creepers movies, it probably came up around that time that they did those, I guess. Um, but I don't remember ever hearing anything about that. I know that MGM did release it briefly on DVD until they realized what they'd done, and then they pulled it off the market. Um, it has been released in a few other countries, but that's not one that they're actively licensing out anymore. I think that's when they're just like, okay, we're just going to put that over here. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine this day and age anybody putting that out. We no, did, no, like, no, uh, no. go back and watch that a, a year or so ago. And it's very, like, there is a lot of shit in, in that that's very, like, yes. disturbing. It really, the problem I mean, with that movie is, now, since you know what happened, Yeah. when you watch it, you're just like, oh, oh, mm-hmm. ooh, that's the, right. oh, oh. And it's it's just, yeah, it's not worth it for any student. No one would, no one in their right mind would take that on, considering the blowback they'd get. Uh, it's just no. Return to Horror High, is that one still with Vestron? It's available on HD on Vudu, but there's no physical release. Uh, that never was with Vestron. That was a New World title. Um, so I think that's still over with that catalog. 
Unless now, that was one that Anchor Bay did. Yeah. Uh, I think I have it. And I did I did some special features for that for the 88 Films Blu-ray of it. But it has not come out here domestically. Well, old Curly Jaws finally showed up. You don't know his gimmick, Slippy. He likes... <laughs> And he says it's not a gimmick. He actually likes these movies. But he's requesting the Bye Bye Man on, uh, I'm guessing, 4K. Okay. <laughs> Sign the petition online. He's uh, really Jaws. He's really into the Fog remake, too. I'm sorry, what now? He's really uh, advocates the Fog remake as well. I'm sorry, I, there's... He, uh, he likes the Fog remake. The remake of the Fog with Fallout no, Boy. Yeah, the one oh, with the the end where it's like. I'm, I'm sorry, no, there must be some. I, it sounds like you're saying that this guy's a fan of the Fog remake, but that's not possible. Yeah, he says it's better than the original. Again, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I, those words, I understand the meaning of each of those words, but that sentence doesn't make any sense. No, me either. I don't know. There's something wrong with him, but we've yet to figure out what it is. But he likes uh, he likes the Fog remake. No, and no I think no, he no, likes no, drugs. No, one, no, no. You can, <laughs> it's a, there's no liking the Fog remake. But it, what, it is. What is, I don't even care if you don't like the original film. You, the Fog remake is a pile of shit. It's not even a real movie. He says it's better than the original Halloween. I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah, he oh, likes you know, it. Hey, no, I wait, mean, no, wait, least... you know, wait. People are free to believe whatever they want and like whatever they want. You shouldn't take shit from me or you guys or anything about their choices. Right. I mean, clearly, the man had an accident at some point and hit his head real hard. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to, it's not fair. You know, the man's injured and uh, he should be able to like what he wants without judgment from anybody. So, sir, you go on liking the Fog remake. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. <laughs> I tell you something else too. He actually liked the new Netflix Texas Chainsaw better. I just wanted you to know that as well because I have to know it. I, I actually so. enjoyed the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I actually kind of had fun with that. Yeah, it's not my. I don't think it's the best of the series, but it's certainly been better than anything else we've got in that series in a long goddamn time. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think I uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D was better. Okay, you can go. <laughs> that girl's. I, that made it better to me. That by itself. De De what was her name? Alexandra Did da da yeah, the, the With the, with the magic yeah. clingy shirt. That the shirt magic pissed me there. off. Yeah. Uh. I mean, she's strapped like this, and that shirt is open, but it won't move any further against the laws of physics. And yeah. I'm just like, look. Come on. I'm not all. I understand <laughs> her not wanting to flash her breasts in a gratuitous situation like that. But don't, don't it tease should've... us like that. No. Don't do that. I agree. Keep the shirt closed or do it wide open. Pick one of the two. Don't half-ass it. Don't do that shit. I agree. Evil Laugh or Open House? I know both those movies, and I don't know where they are or what's going on. Are you working on Near Dark, the 4K? No, I wish I was. Um, that has re That has had some... Hiccups in there because they can't. They haven't been. They've been having trouble getting access to the negative. Red to kill from '94. I've, I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. I've heard of that one. And Terror Terror Graham. Graham. <laughs> so, that one I've, I'm vaguely familiar with, but I have never seen that, so I don't know. The Rune Stone from 1990. I think I've heard of that. Oh, the Rune Stone. Yeah, uh, that one was over at uh, Lionsgate for a long time. I don't know if it is anymore. So I don't think that that one will be happening there. Another one of uh, Oak Hurley's favorites is Attack of the Sasquatch. Where is he coming up with these fucking movies? Uh, the <laughs> which which I don't remember. As I just got done doing something for Creature for Black Lake for Synapse, so that's something. That's a Bigfoot movie. Did you see that they're they're doing a 4K of Legend of Boggy Creek? Yeah. <laughs> like, how? <laughs> Like, I'm just confused. Like, that one and uh, children shouldn't play with dead things. Now, come on. Well, how, I'll, I'll how good is see. that going to look? Well, well, we'll wait and see. Actually, Boggy Creek is, is a pretty nicely filmed movie. Children shouldn't play with dead things is a little rough. But, um, you know, just hey, a look. little bit. Yeah. Mortu which mortuary? 
Is there's there's a, a few hoop of them. Of the 83 one, the, the film that one. Yeah, that, that one's, one's out. out. Yeah, that one's been out. I've got that damn one in there. Yeah, I think MVD did it not too long ago. Yeah. So maybe he's talking about uh, Toby Hooper's Mortuary with Denise well, Crossman. I hope he's not talking about that. I mean, listen, we all like Toby Hooper. He was great, but I don't. I think we I'd can like all to agree. do an edition of the the toolbox murders that he did. I like. I that. Don't, listen, the only thing I remember about that movie is Shea Moon Zombie getting killed in the first like ten minutes, which apparently everybody would love. So I mean, that's <laughs> true, especially now. God. Listen, Jesus. I, uh, yeah. The um, they're doing nice. the uh, 4K Criterion of Night of the Living Dead. Have you uh, heard anything about that? And the, are they using a new transfer on that? Or is oh no, that's the 4K a... restoration that they did. Okay, and that was already done in 4K and everything. So that. Uh, um, and then and, I saw someone asked about Day of the Dead. Yeah, they they do want to do one, uh, Screen Factory and the owners, but the negative is in limbo out there at the moment. So a lot of the stuff that it seems like Screen Factory is doing. Aside from a couple, I mean, there's been a couple like Alligator and uh, the Child's right. Play sequels yeah, I did, and stuff. I did, I did some work on Alligator, not a lot. But, but like uh, most of it's transfers that are pretty much already ready, right? The 4Ks. To some degree. You yeah. Know, although some of them they have to do new ones for. But um, it's I, existing licenses for titles they have already. I'm curious about this, if you know anything about these two, though. Either Inside or Martyrs. The, uh, oh, the French movies? Yeah. No, no. Martyrs is getting, I think, a re-release in Australia. Uh, the label down there is doing it. Um, so I think that's coming. I don't know about Inside, though. That's a movie well, I've never gone back and watched since, like, 2007. Because that just... Oh, yeah, God. That's Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> I, 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 I'm surprised, because that, that one should have been part of the Republic catalog unless it's reverted back to other producers. But that would be a fun one to do. Um, what sure. about the flesh eater sequel uh, you're supposed to have the only known footage what what <laughs> what the fuck i don't think so no been holding out this whole time i know <laughs> would that be fucking killer? that'd be the movie you go on to like put out you guys the like, flesh eater sequel no, so, no. according to Dave here, one of the Vinegar Syndrome guys said that they would release Clown House. Oh, sure. He posted about it on one of the forums. You know what? I'm sure they would do it because they'll, they'll weather any controversy. Those guys are pretty fearless. But MGM ain't going to let them have it. No. There's, it's, I can't imagine they'd be like, yeah, sure. This won't come back to bite us in the ass. <laughs> you know. Yeah, no PR yeah. problems with this. No. Here you and go. their legal department is so strict. There's no way you could ever do any extras for it. Because uh, they're, you know, it's like they don't even like people mentioning they had negative days on the set, let alone addressing any of the horrible shit that went on during that movie. So, yeah, uh, I, I don't see MGM being like, sure, clown house, fuck it, why not? You know, no. Right. Yeah. Pablo, he's not a fan of uh, Boobenstein, according to uh, Pablo Papano. With the but he gave me twenty dollars. Super chat. Twitter. He gave me twenty. So. Um, <laughs> Give me Twitter. Yeah, like he's comparing it to the Victor Miller, like the whole thing with Victor Miller and Sean Cunningham, which I think that's it's a whole. Not, yeah, I mean it's the same. No, that's not the same thing at all, really. Because R- Richard's always owned Dawn of the Dead and Martin, and that's always he originally movie. owned Creep Show and all that too. They sold that to. Well, he was a producer on those, but those weren't financed by him. That those were financed by a company called. UFDC, which was run by a guy named Salah Hassanine, who only recently passed away. He was like 101, I think. Um, and he did a three-picture deal with George that encompassed... He picked up Dawn of the Dead for distribution, but that had already been made. Richard had already financed that through Dario Argento and some European money and so forth. But that was under Richard's control. But based was on it? the success theatrically releasing Dawn, Salah Hassanine offered George a three-picture deal, which was Knight Rider's Creep Show and Day of the Dead. That company, UFDC, eventually folded up into Taurus Entertainment, who owns those those titles now, except for some things on Creep Show, which got sold for theatrical distribution here in North America to Warner Brothers. But the other one stayed with that. So that's why those titles are controlled by other people outside of Rubenstein. Rubenstein controls Dawn of the Dead, Martin, and a movie he did with uh, 
outside of Romero called The Night Flyer, a Stephen King movie. Called oh, yeah. Yeah, that's another one that has. That's one out. everybody asks about, yeah. too. I know. I would love to see that one come out, too. That's an underrated little movie. <clears throat> Mark Pavia did a great job on that. Miguel Ferrer is so yep. much fun in that movie to watch. Um, but, yeah. yeah. Another one we talk about all the time. I would love to see a 4K of it. Uh, Manhunter. MGM Screen Factory bought that the... movie in. Pro- that was part of another catalog that Anchor Bay had for a while. And uh, then MGM bought it outright because Hannibal Lecter, you know. Right. And um, I think, yeah, didn't Screen Factory do a, a Manhunter? They, yeah, they Blu-ray. Did, yeah, it's yeah. completely out of print and goes for like a damn fortune now. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be a 4K of that sooner or later. That's just Yeah, thing. that one would be, I mean, just the visuals in that. I think it would yeah. look great. But I don't know if they would, they would have to involve Michael Mann or not, and he can be kind of meticulous. So, you know, we'll see. But I'm sure there'll be a 4K of that at some point from somebody. Campfire Tales, Grim Perry Tales, and Necronomicon. Necronomicon is just, it seems like it's thoroughly fucked. There's just foreign releases, yes, but domestically... There's just some weird shit with that. I don't know what. Um, Campfire Tales, I don't know either. But Grim Prairie Tales, someone was going to do that. But I don't remember who it was. And I like that movie a lot. James Earl Jones and Brad Dourif. It's a really, really good little movie. But um, I do remember someone was going to do it. But then something came up. I'm not sure if it was a negative issue or something. What's the deal with Sidekicks? We talked about that with Garrett a lot because he's a big fan of that movie. What, the Chuck Norris thing? Yeah, the Chuck oh, yeah. Norris and Jonathan Brandis, which was a pretty big hit for Chuck Norris, you know, back in the day. As far as Chuck Norris things go. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I That one I have not kept track of. Well, that one, <laughs> as far as I it's know. It's out of his wheelhouse, I think. Well, that bit. one's never been on DVD, even. I don't think there's even been a DVD no. of that, which is all. That's very odd. So we got to gotta find out what the fuck's going on with Psyche. It's got Joe Piscopo in it. I mean, well, you know, they should have dog something figured out by is now. out on DVD. Well, Top Dog, Norris. yeah. Well, you got to have Top Dog on DVD. I mean, right. what do you, if you don't have Top Dog on DVD, what the fuck are you doing? I mean, now, um, we should make that a Vestron title, Top Dog. <laughs> That would be cool. I'd probably get it just for the cover. Um, <laughs> it's just Chuck Norris hugging that yeah. dog on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> the... Uh, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, though, the... Vinegar Syndrome release. Yeah. Have you, are you working on that at all, or have you heard anything about I am, that? I am working on it a little bit. I'm helping out in some ways and giving them some contact info, and they're going to do some stuff. I'm kind of out of the Chainsaw 2 business at this point. I've produced three or four different editions of that, and they're, Synapse, or uh, Vinegar Syndrome wants to re-interview some people that I've already interviewed, and part of me is just kind of like, I can't. I can't do it again. You need someone with a fresh approach to this who hasn't done this before to really tackle it at this point. And I don't want to be that guy that's just kind of like, all right, I'll go. Because I love that movie to death. That movie means so much to me. Um, So I am helping him out with some of the stuff on there and uh, providing as much of the older stuff as we can get on there. And it's going to be a loaded release. And so I'm I'm, I'm involved, but... uh, um, it's one where I'm just like, it's time to let somebody else really put their stamp on new stuff for that. Because Lord knows, we we found every single goddamn person even walk by the set on that movie, <laughs> and it's it's just at the point where, you know, I don't want to read. I, and I'm at the point where it's like I don't want to just talk to people I've already talked to, because I won't have anything new to ask. Somebody else might, somebody else might have an interesting perspective on this that I don't have. So I'm just like, you you do it. But I'll help you find the people you need to find. That's not a problem at all. Uh, Rambo had an interesting one here, too. And I've thought about this because it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of people that really champion this movie as much anymore. We've never really got a big special edition, 20th anniversary edition or anything like that, which passed a couple of years ago for Blair Witch. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that is? I mean, what's the... I don't know. I, I That's... um. I think that is such a big undertaking that people don't even want to start because there's just, there's so much footage that was shot that we still have never seen. There's so much behind the scenes stuff that no one's ever seen. It's a big story. It would take a lot of time and a lot of money to really tell properly. And I guess it's just one that, uh, I I don't know. That's a very good question. Cause I mean, it, it certainly warrants it. And I'd love 
to somehow go back and do a, a you know an attempt at what the director's original vision for part two would have been, you know, yeah. um, even though that movie, even by his own sense, that movie was going to be flawed no matter what. Um, but it would have been interesting to see what his original cut of that would have been. So I, you know, I, I would love, I, but that one would take like that one. Let me put it to you this way. Blair, Witch would be one. I would do it, but then you'd have to clear my schedule for a year in order to really get that one done. Right. Uh, that one that would be a, a massive undertaking. But a I'd say one. it would yeah it would be worth it just to see like you said like all the stuff they had to have filmed like out oh, yeah, there. They whittle, like, I mean yeah, there's literally footage no one's ever seen. I know the guy who wrote, literally wrote the book on the movie, Matt Blasi. He's a great guy, a friend of mine for years, and he wrote the uh, Eight Days in the Woods or whatever. It's, I can't remember the name of the book, um, but he wrote the book on it. And he's been telling me about all this stuff that no one's even asked the guys about. And it would just be amazing. And that and the story of the movie getting released. And how I got this, you know, is it real? Yeah. Is it not real? And how Artisan didn't really, they kind of were like, we're not going to admit how much of this is real or not. Or, you know, and it was just, because the release strategy of that movie is its own story. Yeah, it's know? like a legend. I mean, yeah, I can remember when it came out and people my age at that time, which would have been, I don't know, 16, in their teenage years or whatever, literally thought that movie was real. And yeah, people I mean, were, you know. it was. I saw a midnight show at the Manor Theater in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was on a stormy night. It was you know, it was like lightning and wind blowing all around. It was like fucking atmosphere outside the theater. And I lived in a little kind of uh, one bedroom apartment complex, and it was in the middle, of kind of in a wooded area. And my friend's driving me back to my house. He says, "Like, do you want to come in and uh, you know have some coffee or something?" No, man, you live out in Sleepy Hollow. Get the fuck out of my car. I don't, <laughs> you know, just don't. And I remember walking out of Blair Witch, and it was a packed house. I mean, you couldn't have fit anybody else in there. And we're walking out, and I'm walking by, and I'm, my friend and I were talking about it a little bit, and a couple passed us on the right going, oh, my God, that was so fucking intense. Oh, my God, what the hell, oh, my God. And they passed on, and then we walked by another group of people, and we overheard, that was the biggest waste of fucking time. <laughs> That was yeah. Opinion. That yeah. was pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. yeah. So it was like right there in the lobby. You had two extreme opinions on this thing. So I would love to do it. I would love to tackle both one and two, and uh, and really do them upright. But again, that's there's a lot. That's like delving into the warehouse at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, essentially, it's like where do you start? You know? We talked about this before. I think maybe last year when we had you on the Tales from the Dark Side. Show, there was which, something about that. I remember, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. another one that was shot on film but edited on video. Yeah. And has anything else come up about maybe the, the masters I, of that? or anything? Not yet, no. Um, that's something that's kind of in the works on my end and trying to get something going for that because I know where the film elements are. They exist. They're all, they're all in storage. They're all safe. But it's going to take a lot because what you have to do is you have to go back reassemble every episode in exact you know shot for shot you have to redo the sound you have to color correct every episode you have to clean it up there's a lot involved in and that costs a lot of money and there's 22 episodes 23 episodes a season that's you know that's several hundred thousand dollars you know if the studio so you got to try to somehow make it economical to them but still worthy enough for your time. And that's difficult. Um, you know, I would love to do it because Tales from the Dark Side, those masters, they look so bad. Yeah, they look they do. so, so bad. And it, it deserves to get restored properly and preserved. And I mean, they were shot on 16 millimeters. So, you know, you, you wouldn't even have to do the work in 4K. You could do it in two. You yeah. know, it's not like it would be that big a deal. But, you know, Monsters is like that. Friday the 13th, the series is like that. Have they ever thought of doing like a GoFundMe top thing or like a it's Kickstarter? Too small it's too small potatoes for that. I mean, this is it's owned by a major studio, so it's not like. Uh, I, because I would imagine like fans would back that to oh, get shit, it out. Yeah, they would. I mean, Absolutely. it would be a. Yeah. It would, but it's it's hard. And the, but the thing is, with Tales from the Dark Side, I know they know the value because they they play it all the time. It's still out there, and there's marathons every year around Halloween and. So it's not like it's an unknown quantity to them. Um, but it's just like, you know, the better our TV sets get, 
the worse those fucking masters look. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, God, this is embarrassing. It almost makes it look like they didn't know what they were doing. It's like, no, no, no. They were talented people working on this show. And uh, it deserves... and a lot, But a lot of TV shows from that time period are like that. TV movies are like that. Toby Hooper, there's a great TV movie he did called The Apartment Complex, which uh, was also edited on video. So there's no way to do a new HD master, but then you'd have to go back in and reconstruct it. Who's going to do that, you know? And so it's it's frustrating, but, you know, hopefully at some point, it's just a matter of getting the right person to listen to you who sees the value in it and then can take it to someone who can then do it, you know? Fat Rob Zombie is in here, Felcher. You've never met him before, have you? No. He said, are you excited about the Munsters? Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> As well, you shouldn't be. No, oh, I ain't excited, excited for the monsters. Oh, fuck I you, Billy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wish I could find the clip of what it was from some dead pit show, maybe fucking fifteen years ago. But it was it was Rob Zombie, and it was just it was some little bit where he's just like, "I'm Rob Zombie. Get the hell out of my way." <laughs> <laughs> I remember the one that was like... Uh, I think that was like him. the skit where like... It, it had come out that he had done like a four-hour documentary on the making of Halloween. <laughs> right, so. right. That's right. And we yeah. had like footage of it and we were going to play the audio. And I think that's what it was. Rob Zombie, get the hell out of my way! <laughs> I got what? a piss! Oh, I, yeah, something. so if you can ever find out what... I would love to hear that again. There was the one, too, where, like, Rob Zombie orders breakfast or something, and it was like, give me some, give me some pancakes! <laughs> pancakes, bitch! Yeah. Oh, God. But, but we yeah. have been rocking and rolling here for two fucking hours and had have had, like, over 120, 130 people almost the whole time. Wow. So. I'm impressed. Um, and I think we've covered almost everything. I mean, people. I've never seen so many movies. damn questions. I mean, there's so many movies that they're asking. There's no way. That's you the thing. I mean, them. God, there's a, there's a little, there's a bottomless pit. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's just to not... ask about. And I, I I want to apologize if it feels like I blew off some of the questions. It's just because I don't know the answers. I don't want to bullshit people into telling you something that you know. Well, I maybe I'll look at. This. I I honestly don't know. Um. So if it if it seems like I don't. Uh, didn't have a lot to say on a certain topic because I literally didn't have anything to say about it. So I, I didn't want to bullshit you guys. Cool. Yeah, when so, we get to the point of like where somebody's asking about Beverly Hills vampires, it's probably, <laughs> it's probably time to pack it in. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> have you got anything new that's coming out or it's just come out that you want to mention on here while we got you on here? Well, I'm Dangerous Tonight. The Toby Hooper's I'm Dangerous Tonight, which I think comes out either this week or next week. Uh, from Kino. I did some stuff for that I'm very proud of. Really happy with that. Uh, a part, an amusement Park, George Romero's Amusement Park comes out from Shudder in September. I'll look for that. Uh, Extreme Prejudice is the latest uh, Vestron title. That came out in uh, April. And uh, there'll be more coming. We're just taking a little bit break for the summer. And then... Um, oh, God, there's been... you know Alligator came out earlier this year. I didn't... Justin Bean produced most of the extras on there, but I did an interview with Brian Cranston, which went over really, really well. Well, you already plugged your podcast, but I think a little voice wants you to plug it again. A little voice wants me to plug it again. Uh, the, 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 the podcast is called The Spooky Picture Show. You can find information out it on all the major podcasting download websites, Spotify, blah, blah, blah. But look for it on Facebook. There's a Facebook page dedicated to it. And it's me and uh, three other friends, Peter Brackey, who wrote Crystal Lake Memories. Uh, again, my friend Chris McGibbon and another friend of ours, Kevin Ellis. Uh, we all played video games together for like the past three or four years. And we would just have these really interesting conversations. And Chris said, we should be taping this shit. And so that's what we do. And so we uh, pick a topic. And every month we uh, record. In fact, we're recording a new episode uh, Monday, which will be out then in August, I think. Uh, so we, uh, we record like a month in advance. And got some really cool stuff and planned uh, for the uh, rest of the year so if if there's if there's another podcast you can fit into your schedule check out the spooky picture show there's a lot of podcasts jesus christ sure. there, there are is. a lot of po- there are a lot but i think we bring something a little bit different to the table and we're definitely not the same uh you know kind of shit that's out there already so we have a voice whether you want to listen to it or not that's up to you but i'm proud of the show and 
I think you guys should definitely check it out. And if you decide you don't like it, go fuck yourselves. Let me ask you this, though. Do you have Fat Rob Zombie in your chat? Oh! No. Yeah! No. No. Not, not yet. Yeah. Not, not yet. But, I mean, maybe he'll grab it. Maybe he'll, he'll glom onto us. And, <laughs> That's and, right. That's and, how you get. This is a yeah. crossover for Fat Rob Zombie to come yeah, on. We've had like a few it. celebrities. Uh, we've had the star of uh, Teen Wolf 3, Alyssa Milano, was in yeah. here. Teen Wolf 3? Yeah. Yeah. Alyssa was Milano. Teen, when, when was there a Teen Wolf 3? Well, it never got made, but she was going to be the star of it. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. But, Last guy um, was about to say. The star of the movie that was never made. Okay. Oh, yeah. right. These people are just creative. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, but, I uh, guess so, yeah. Man, we really appreciate you joining us, and it's been over two hours. That's normally what we do. Uh, I mean, hell, it's fucking work night, but uh, we appreciate you taking the time out, and uh, hopefully we can get you back on here sooner than later yeah you know it doesn't have to be a year every time you know you can, no. you can pretty much bring me on whenever you want just drag me out of the drawer and just, just set me, prop me up in front of this well there's thing. not a whole lot to do still in this uh covid ridden world yeah. really it's getting I've been worse getting out more oh i will say this i didn't realize this. this is just a little aside that means absolutely nothing to you but um when i grew up in southern california we had a chain of drugstores called thrifty drugstores and it was like a Rite Aid or a CVS, basically. But what was unique about thrifty drugstores is they had an ice cream counter in the store where it was like a little Baskin Robbins set up inside the store, and they made and sold their own ice cream. It was thrifty ice cream, thrifty brand ice cream. And it was the best fucking ice cream in the world. It was always really cheap, too. It was very ex- inexpensive, but just high-quality ice cream. Well, Thrifty Drugs got bought out by Rite Aid and so forth, and I left Southern California in the mid-'80s. Come to discover, and I, for years I just thought that had gone away. I went back out in like early 2000, and I went to a Rite Aid, and I saw a Thrifty ice cream counter that they had kept Thrifty ice cream in some of the... I was like, holy shit! And so I just started... Every chance I drove by a Rite Aid, I'm gobbling down fucking Thrifty ice cream. I went back out there a couple years ago. They're selling it in... Rite Aids in the ice cream. They don't have the counters in every store, but they have gallon, you know, half gallon pints of, uh, of the ice cream. It's like, holy shit. But it was really only in the West Coast. That was it. And the Rite Aids around here didn't carry it because they only, man- they only had like one plant out in the West Coast that was manufacturing the ice cream. And you can't ship ice cream like that all across the country. It's never going to make it in time. Even if it's refrigerated, it's just not going to last very well. Well... I've been going back out finally after COVID, going into stores, and come to discover Thrifty Ice Cream has shown up in the Rite Aids here. But I can't find it because the word's gotten out, and I get there, and this is big gaping hole in the freezer section where the (laughs) Thrifty fucking ice cream is supposed to be, and I can't get my goddamn mint and chip fucking Thrifty Ice Cream. I've been looking for days now, and I can't find the motherfucker, so I'm getting really tired of this shit. So if you're in my area in Detroit... (laughs) <laughs> and you find a location that has mitten chip, call, email me and let me know where it is. And I'm going to go get it or bring it to my house. I'll pay you because I'm getting sick of this shit because I want my goddamn nostalgia ice cream, motherfuckers. He wants a door dash to him, boss. Yeah. Careful what you wish for. Remember that time they door dashed like 50 Eight things to your days. house? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll wake up tomorrow with 50 <laughs> melting cartons of ice cream on my friend. Say, no. <laughs> So uh, I'm not sure if, if this ice cream started getting carried here two years ago when the pandemic started or if it just happened, but I'm just like, holy shit. So that's all I'm going to be doing tomorrow is just driving around Detroit looking for this fucking ice cream. <laughs> that's all I'm going to be doing. So uh, it's just... Uh, well, good luck to you. I hope you find it. I know. It's all and I at want least in a couple, life right now. That's all I want. I don't give a um, shit about anything else. <laughs> Everything else can go fuck itself. I just want my thrifty ice cream. <laughs> but yeah, I, I wanted to thank you again and thank everybody else for coming on here and yeah. flooding well, we, the chat with, with all these titles, a lot of which we haven't asked about before, I don't think. No. Yeah, some of those were new. Some of those are not And we'll out. definitely have to bring you back when uh, Trick or Treat and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street box set gets released. No, absolutely. I think that would be a great idea. You know, yeah. Just, just Got to. We'll have to do that. Yeah, yeah totally. Um... But yeah, I think this uh, 
it's been a really great show again appreciate everybody thumbs up the video and all that good shit yes thanks and, for all the uh, questions and everything guys i really appreciate that and again i'm sorry i wasn't able to give more complicated answers or the answers you would have wanted to hear but such as it is we're doing a patreon review show on thursday i think that's the next thing that we're doing we're covering the incredible melting man which i think was one that one of the early screen factory titles mm -hmm. um and the mahoning drive-in theater documentary i think that's the oh, two cool. that we were requested so yeah. have you ever been to the mahoning sleeping i've never been there but i was really happy to hear that they saved it and were able to keep it keep it going because there was that period there where it was looking like they were going to get booted out of there and um, I'm glad that it all worked out so there because we need we need places like that to stick around there aren't enough of them as it is and so the ones we've got we got to hold on to man yeah for sure yeah they do a lot of really cool stuff over they I, do they really I do. would love to be within that driving distance of that place I know like, that's I would, the problem is it's yeah. just far enough away from me that I couldn't really go there on a semi-regular basis but it's just you know but still i'm, I'm we were talking about maybe doing on a, like a meetup or something there at some point but i don't know with the gas prices and everything i don't know when that'll be oh yeah yeah but, well i would gladly do a meetup out there sometime that'd be fun yeah cool yeah. yeah mark i think uh is on our facebook page he's one of the oh right yeah managers or whatever i don't know if he owns it or if he just works there or whatever but uh yeah that would be cool for sure. But yeah, man, we appreciate you joining us again and, um, we will catch you all next time over at deadbit.com. You got a thumbs up. Oh, you you got to play the slippy song one more time. Slippy song one more time before we go. <laughs> yeah, you got to right. right. do it. Right. We'll, we'll go out with the slippy rap. <laughs> Slipcase, Michael Bell, Bell, Slipcase, Michael Bell, Bell, Slip. Get slippy with it, slippy, motherfucker. Slipcase, Michael Bell, Bell, oh goddamn, get slippy with that motherfucker. Make some DVD action, goddamn, hurry. I wanna watch some DVDs. Slip it, slip, case, case, melt your baby. Whoa, sucky, sucky, lad, lad, lad. Slipcase, Michael Bell, Bell, Slipcase, Michael Bell, Bell, Slipcase. That's like oh. the best guy. That whole middle section where he just like starts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get slippery. Okay, God damn. Like God damn. Make Get some DVD extras. Hurry. God Get damn. Get that motherfucker. Get slippery with that motherfucker. Make some DVD extras. God damn. Slippy. Sucky, sucky. Hurry. <laughs> Hurry. Uh, <laughs> I love that shit. That's so oh, funny. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah i'll send you mp3 of that i want to get it i do i really that. would love to have a copy yeah. of that because i'm just gonna uh -oh. play it wherever i go now <laughs> just walk in, boom slip case michael felsher god damn hurry motherfucker, hurry, motherfucker. <laughs> make some dvd extras hurry hurry god damn, god damn. get slip with that motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> oh shit <laughs> oh, my god. oh god all right guys y'all have a good one it's good speaking with uh, you again we'll do you. it hopefully we'll do it again soon yeah all right see give us a thumbs see up you. Off you butts. like subscribe and if you subscribe here's something else you can do once you subscribe you can click the bell notification right and it'll notify you anytime that dead pit puts up new shit or don't. I really don't give a f if you do. I want you to. I want you to. <laughs> I don't let's, care. let's keep our community growing here on no, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, they need to do that, pal. No, don't you yeah. dare touch it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And click that bell. Before this video officially ends, old Curly Jaws has a message for you. Go on over to shop.deadpit.com and go look at their team public store right now. We've got some new shirts like the old Curly Jaws official t-shirt, which is brutal and badass. You got the Yummy Gummy shirt with the captain himself on the shirt. The you got Uncle Bill's face on a fucking shirt. You got the Final Girl shirt. You got all these shirts over at Chop. Dot deadpit.com get them before they're all out especially the new one bedtime 1039 it doesn't get better than that so go on out check out these shirts at shop.deadpit.com go look at their team public store you're gonna have a good old time get them all
Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Deadpit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows and fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears start at only $1.